Hello, everybody. I'll be waiting until uh, one. Um, also, can if this hasn't happened already, if one of the uh, volunteers or one of the TDs, if you can send out the a reminder the, um, thing with the link, that'd be great. To all coaches? Yes. All coaches or just um uh, all coaches. Because this is available anyone who wants to watch can watch. Okay. Yeah, no, just saying that we're uh, starting. I gotta to... test the buzzer first. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um Welcome everyone. We'll be getting started soon. How's the audio level? Do you guys want it louder or are we all clear? It's all clear. Maybe a tad bit louder though. Okay. But Thank you. I will. I'm moving up a little bit. Take this time, yo. Uh, club, the, the stream is a bit soft. That's not on me if it's the streams. If the stream is too soft, I don't want to turn myself up and have <laughs> the rest of the stream be really quiet. If uh, Eric or Robert, if you want to do that, mess with the audio level a little bit, that might help. Um, before we begin, I just want to note that um, we are already live, so please don't say anything that you don't want people to hear on stream. I use the wrong, wrong font size for the previous email. Hey, Club, oh. could you um, verify Gordon? Yes, I got it. Uh, Caleb, can we ask everyone to put their school name first so that it's an alphabetical order? Um, I think that would be pretty useful. We just rename people. Okay, let's go ahead and rename people. Does it matter? I actually don't know. Uh, just for like um, uh, my sake, so keeping track of a. Oh, okay. Then sure. Uh, actually, everybody who's here, if you can help out with that, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, um, if you can see why I renamed uh Vishal's username to um, same format, use uh, please use the square brackets and have the same team name across all team. All members. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Just for it'll make our everything a little bit easier. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to reveal myself. I guess. Hi, everybody. We'll have some video clues or something at some point. <laughs> Not really, but we'll see. Uh, you know, do not disturb. Also. Okay. And TDs, if you want to <clears throat> expedite, that would help. Um, I am multitasking. It's up to you. I don't. It's fine. <laughs> One second. Okay, okay I'm gonna. Save this to C as well. Uh, and we are going to get started in about a minute, so let's go. <clears throat> um, we should, or is everyone here? Uh, wow, if we all renamed, if we all renamed ourselves, that would make it really easy to check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, um, let's see. 
the audio here. I wonder how how quick people how quickly people would re would rename themselves if we just threaten uh, people with a DQ. So um, Miller, you guys are you uh have you agreed to be down a person for the first thirty minutes or so? It's probably gonna be about 15, 20 minutes because I need to go over rules. Um, if that's true, then that's fine. <laughs> if you're okay with that, then we'll go with it. Okay, um, finish renaming, please. <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like Wait, to- Wait, uh, Clive, one moment. Yes. Um, the- one coach asked for information regarding the thing, and I believe. Oh, wait, you know what? Let me move this here. Uh, just yeah, if it's uh, if you don't want to say it out loud, please. If it's if you shouldn't say it out loud, just message me. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> Whoops. That's not the right button. Okay. So welcome everybody to Science Quiz Bowl uh, Division B buzzer round for the 2022 Birdstone Invitational uh, satellite. Uh, my name is Caleb Chang. Uh, I'm a student at the University of Illinois, which you can see on my water bottle here, among other places. Um, and I will be reading for you guys today and kind of coordinating everything. So. I'm going to go over some rules, general, and also just the format. If you haven't played Quiz Bowl before, especially, this will be... Please listen up, because you will probably need this. Okay. Um, unlike Mini, we are doing a toss-up bonus format for this. So it will be... Uh, we'll have 24 sets of questions, um, 24 toss-ups, and 24 uh, bonuses, plus a little extra question at the very end. Um, these are distributed between six categories, physics, chemistry, biology, earth, space, science, chem, uh, computer science, and miscellaneous. Miscellaneous meaning interdisciplinary stuff, math, etc. cetera. Um, okay. There are also going to be 24 bonus questions. I'll kind of explain what a bonus question is um, when we, in a second. So just, uh, but it's also 24 sets of bonuses. Those are also distributed between those six categories approximately equally. Uh, you shouldn't need to get pen and paper because we won't be doing any computational questions. At least there aren't any explicitly computational questions. So that should not be a problem. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Alan, do you want to talk about BuzzBot or... Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I do. <laughs> so, uh, Science Quizbird is the bot that we're going to be using for buzzing. Um, it reduces all. Um, Jason, please don't do anything yet. Uh, it reduces like it. It makes it so that we're not no. There's there's going to be no arguments over who buzzed first and whatever. Um, okay. Uh, to buzz, uh, we are going to start a, uh, after after um, Club reads a question. We are going, or before Club reads a, um, Caleb reads a question, we are going to type, going to begin a question, um, after which you can buzz at any time. To buzz, you can type either BZ or BUZZ, as in buzz. BZ is just a shorthand for buzz. Um, it can be lowercase, uppercase, whatever. Um, and you can only buzz when a question is active. Um, after you buzz, you will have 11 seconds to answer the question. Um, the timer ends when you either type out an answer, or, uh, or when you finish typing out an answer, or you finish speaking an answer. Um, if you begin saying an answer and do not finish after the 11 seconds are up, uh, your question will be marked as incorrect. Um, we can do the sample question. Club, do you, would you like to? Sorry, I was like, I'm I'm dealing with some stuff. <laughs> okay, um... I'll, I'll read it then. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I will read a sample question. Um, note that this will not count towards anything. OK, um, sample question. Uh, toss up, this is physics. Though its namesake originally proposed this effect for sound waves, 
Hippolyte Fizeau showed it to be true for electromagnetic waves too. Relativistic redshift is a result of the relativistic um, community penguining. Uh, yes, that is correct. Um, and at this point, um, I would typically, I, I would acknowledge your answer. Uh, okay, yeah, also note that uh, please wait until I've acknowledged your answer, like as in called your team or your, or your name before you answer. Um, and yes, that should be it. Uh, Jason, would you like to explain scoring? Oh, I got it, I got it. Okay. Just trying to, just sending some documents around. Uh, really quick uh, clarification. Uh, Kennedy, are you guys all together? Yeah, we're all together. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Because I was counting, I'm going, wait, why are there, why are we short three people? Okay, that, that makes more sense. Thank you. Um, okay, so when it comes to scoring, first of all, that was a toss-up, in case I wasn't very clear. Um, so within each toss-up, there will be a certain period of, a pre, it'll be pre-designated in my notes, but it won't, I won't tell you uh, until after. Uh, whether you received it or not, which is a point called power. If you answer before power, you will gain 15 points uh, for that correct answer. If you answer uh, correctly after power, that will be worth 10 points. Um, and if you uh, get it wrong, uh, if you if you answer incorrectly before the end of the question, you will receive five point penalty. Um, and if you uh, give it, uh, if you give an answer that's incorrect after the question ends. Uh, you will receive no penalty, but you also won't receive any points. Um, there will be some cases where answers might be partially correct. Sometimes you'll be too specific. Sometimes you, I need you to elaborate a little bit or clarify, or you're really close. In that case, I'll tell you prompt, possibly with a little extra question uh, added to it. That's like, can you be more specific? Or sometimes I'll say anti-prompt, which means, can you please be less specific? You're you said something that's way too specific for what we need. Um, you can let us know, uh, and I'll give you an extra few seconds to answer. Five seconds. Um, yeah, there is, there is possibly there is a possible chance that you may be prompted many times before you get a correct answer or incorrect answer. Uh, I don't anticipate this happening, but just know that it could. <laughs> um, and I have answer guides here. Um, I'm not an expert in everything, and you'll know that immediately when I start pronouncing things wrong, but um, you will also, uh, I have predetermined answers, and there is a possibility that I misunderstand something, and I actually give you, I don't give you points on something that you should, or vice versa. Um, in that case, uh, we will check it against someone who actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> um, so, and we will We'll verify that and just let us know or let me know. Okay. Uh, so that's toss ups. So toss ups are going to be this like paragraph, kind of like what Alan just read. It's going to be like f four or five hints, usually, <laughs> approximately. Um, bonuses. This is the part that's kind of new. If you haven't played Quizzle before, definitely this will be very, this might be new to you. Um, if you answer a toss-up correctly, or if your team answers a toss-up correctly, your team will be eligible to get some bonus points using through a bonus. Uh, a bonus will have a lead-in, which is uh, a part of the question, which is just kind of a short sentence that sets, maybe it's uh, a little bit of context, maybe it'll give you a hint for the first clue, whatever. Then a bonus has three questions called parts. Uh, each part will be worth five points. This is different from standard quiz bowl, but it's just because we have a lot of teams, so... Uh, and not as many questions compared to number of teams, so they're going to be worth five points each. Um, bonuses you don't need to buzz in for, so um, you can just wait for me to finish the question, and I'll give you, I believe, what do we mark? Ten seconds? Uh, you'll have ten seconds after I finish reading the question to uh, answer. Um, bonuses generally have an easy, medium, and hard part. Uh, this means that you will, right, not necessarily in that order. Uh, if you get one part of bo uh, a bonus wrong, you can. I will continue to the next part of the bonus and finish the bonus. You just won't receive points on that. There's also no penalty for wrong answers, so take a guess. 
Um, after the whole bonus, which is once again three parts, once that whole bonus is um, is finished, uh, I will read the next toss up. So we're gonna go bounce back and forth, toss up bonus, toss up bonus. Um, we're gonna talk about protests. If somebody disconnects, we get some internet issues uh, during a round. I will finish the question in that we're doing right now uh, before uh, we deal with that issue, and then we will figure out what to do with it. <laughs> Okay, um, cheating and this kind of po and camera policy. Um, I'm going to need to see all of you, or actually I probably won't be looking because I'll be reading questions, but um, we're going to need to see you. Um, there's, uh, so we're going to need cameras on. If you have issues with that, um, which it's in the format document, so I hope you would have told us already ahead of time. Um, the the other thing is uh, we want to while questions are being read uh, we want one hand to be in frame this can mean raising your hand maybe put it on your chin that's totally fine if you want to rest your hand rest your head on your hand or something that's totally fine just make sure it's in frame while I'm reading a question uh, you don't need to it doesn't need to be for uh, it doesn't need to be like you know in your face or something it just needs to be in frame somewhere at least one hand so uh if you can get that going by the way make sure you make sure at an angle where I, we can see your uh see you and the hand while we're reading questions um the other thing is please keep muted for the duration of this uh this is just to make sure that we're all um we don't get some chaos from a lot of people talking at the same time or background noise or whatever. Um, I don't know who just left. <laughs> also, uh, I and the other volunteers reserve the right to remove anybody for misconduct, cheating, etc. Uh, at any point for no appeal. That's just something that's going to... I hope that doesn't have to happen, but yeah. Um, one okay, couple things, couple bonuses, couple bonus things that we're going to talk about really quick that aren't on the format document, but it's just some addendum. Uh, first, um, I, we want to acknowledge all of our awesome event supervisors who helped write questions for for the buzz around. So, um, one of the things we're going to do is that right at the end, uh, at the very end of that whole thing. So, if you if nobody gets a toss up correct, uh, we will. There won't be a bonus for that round. <laughs> um, any bonuses we skip, we're going to read at the very end. Uh, and those are going to be worth one uh, one point. Remember, easy, medium, and hard parts, right? So it's going to be one point for the easy, two points for medium, three points for hard. Um, and it's mostly just for fun. But uh, once again, we want to credit our ESs for their work. Uh, scoring will be like Jeopardy for that, if you're familiar. So if you. Uh, if you get the question correct, you will get the value that it's assigned, one, two, or three. If you get the question wrong, you will uh, lose that many points. So an easy if you miss an easy question, it'll be minus one, miss a medium, miss a hard. Actually, we added this in kind of late. Um, I, feel, I feel like it should be inverted, right, Alan? I'm oh, sorry? I feel like scoring should be inverted for that, right? For one, two, and three? Yeah. We can just do a set minus two or something. Yeah. I I'm going to make that change right now. You, you can tell that this was added kind of late. So, <laughs> um, um, Aldrich uh, from Community Penguining asks, can you repeat the bonus at the end part again, please? Uh, yeah. So let me do this in full. So. Uh, if a toss-up is answered incorrectly by all teams, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention this, um, toss-ups are dead if three teams answer them incorrectly. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, if no team gets a toss-up correct, a, a certain toss-up, we won't read the bonus uh, with it because there's no team to give the bonus points to. Uh, however, if the... Um, if a bonus is skipped, I'm going to mark it down in my notes, and we will come back to it at the very end. Uh, at that point, they will be worth 
uh, up to six points total. So one, and this is for buzzing. So it will be run like a mini toss up. One point for easy toss ups, two points for or easy bonuses, two points for medium, three points for hard. You'll lose two points uh, if you get any of them wrong. Okay. Uh, yes, I think that's all. And we'll have one final toss up at the very end. That's kind of for fun. Okay. I think. Any other questions, anyone? Uh, you can you can withdraw for a bonus, but uh, there's no penalty for incorrect answers. So you you can just make a guess. If you really, I feel like that would be that would make more sense. <laughs> That's up to you. Um, right. If you, I told I forgot to mention this. Also, I don't know if Alan did. Yeah. If you buzz, if if your team buzzes in. Uh, you can't re-buzz if you withdraw, but you won't receive a deduction if you decide to withdraw your buzz. Which means, you know, I don't know, or like, no answer, just say withdraw. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Um, yeah. Oh, final thing that I totally forgot to mention uh, as well. Conferring is allowed for any question um in the following way directing this is it's just one team so it's just it's just whoever just make it clear it's okay two things <laughs> first try to make it clear that you're that what you're saying is the answer you want just type it in the buzz uh, you can type it in the buzzing chat or just say it out loud either one is fine uh but make it clear that it's actually your answer um and Conferring between your teammates is allowed. You have private uh, text channels for that. Or for bonuses, you can do it via voice. I don't know if you if it makes sense for you to do that, but you technically can. Uh, the only thing that I the only requirement for that is that you have uh, conferring is only allowed after a toss up is read, or after you buzz in. So um, while I'm reading the toss up, you can't confer amongst each other. Okay, does that make sense? As a slight addendum, um, you can only confer, confer in your channels or the voice call and not in any private channels, such as a group chat or um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And just for Kennedy, uh, just for Kennedy, since you're together, um, if you're conferring in person, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, conferring is in person. Yeah, so while you're doing that, uh, just please unmute so that we know that you're <laughs> what you're doing. Actually, we we all are in the server with our individual accounts. We just in the we just have one account in the voice chat. Yeah, that's that's totally fine. Uh, just make sure, just please like unmute when you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, we are going to get started in just a moment. Uh, I forgot to prepare this. Uh oh. Uh, I was gonna read a sample, but I totally forgot. <laughs> so let me pull a question. It's fine. This should be pretty simple. Uh. In one moment. Okay. Just to give you an idea of how um, bonuses are formatted. Actually, I'll just read the one that's on. That's a sample from. This is from ACF Fall. This is a collegiate tournament, so don't. Uh, yeah, this is a collegiate tournament, so don't feel too bad if you miss anything. But this is a, the sample question that was on there. Just to get you an idea of how this will kind of how bonuses are kind of structured. So. Uh, this is from ACF Fall once again. Uh, an atom of one of these elements would act as a deactivating group uh, in an uh, electrophilic uh, aromatics <coughs> substitution reaction for 10 points each. Name this group of elements. All these elements, are the, are, except the lightest, are exemplary leaving groups in SN2 reactions and form strong diatomic acids with hydrogen. And then you can answer after that. You don't need to... Um, so since it's a bonus, you can wait till the whole question is read and then just answer after. Okay, just for clarity. Okay, that would be that would be halogens. Okay. 
Um, and then I would move on to the next part. So halogen atoms are deactivating groups um, because they're, and so on and so forth. So just, you can wait till the end. <clears throat> All right, are we ready? I can't stall that much longer for Miller, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, are we all ready? Give me a thumbs up or something. Uh, uh, all right. So, uh, let's begin. I have my order in my notes. And I'm just going to wait for that to get ready. Remember, you can type buzz or BZ. I think both are fine. Both are fine. <laughs> Wait for the uh, please buzz below to show up. <clears throat> and uh, if you do, if you um, also, I forgot to add. Um, if someone answers incorrectly, um, I will do exclamation mark B, or I will I will begin. I'll, I'll begin a question um, again. And if you buzz before um, before the please buzz below question, you will not be acknowledged by the bot. Um, so yeah. please one uh, buzz after and do not spam. Um, yeah yeah so just wait for wait for the line to actually show up <laughs> okay so let us begin all right uh, zaitsev's rule states that the reaction between these substances and strong acids form the most stable alkenes possible without the presence of oxygen intestinal bacteria will produce one of these substances as a waste product when breaking down sugars these substances are commonly used in fuel production and beverages. For 10 points, name this type of organic compound, of which include... Uh, Beckendorf? Yes, Beckendorf. Alcohol. Uh, yes. Nice. <clears throat> uh, bonus. We are going to... There. Okay. Let me make sure I'm on the right spot. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, Beckendorf... Uh, any of you can answer. Uh, no buzzing needed. Just wait for the end of the question. Okay. Um, sorry, clarification. Um, Cleb, are we, uh, is there a 10 second time limit on this as well? Yes. Okay. I will kind of roughly keep track, but if you want to do it as well, if you want to like, yeah, it, I'll do it. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, bonus. Information is often stored and represented in a variety of data structures. For five points each, name the following data structures. Uh, linear probing and separate chaining are two variants of this data structure. While accessing elements from this structure takes constant time on average, the worst case time complexity is linear. <clears throat> Backendorf. <clears throat> Array. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, we're gonna uh, the answer to that was hash table. Okay, moving on though. Uh, this data structure can be thought of as an undirected graph with degree at most two. Equivalently, nodes in this data structure have at most two two children. And once again, Beckendorf only. Uh, uh, we're prompting prompt. on that. Prompt. You didn't mention that. Prompt, yeah. Can clarify. I don't think that's... Uh, that is anti-prompt. Fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, it can be a little less specific. Uh, no, that's not a thing. No, sorry. Um, sorry, that is incorrect. Yeah. Uh, binary tree is what we were looking for. <clears throat> okay, next. If you can... Alan, okay. This data structure, represented with square brackets in Java, represents an ordered series of objects. Yeah, array is correct. That's plus five. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so that's kind of how the format works. If in case you weren't clear, it wasn't clear already. So let's continue. This is once again open to everybody. Toss up. Good luck. I'm gonna wait for that to start. The green tau theorem, proven in 2004, states that the sequences, sequence of these numbers contains arithmetic sequences. Uh, community. Yes. Power. 
Nice. Prime numbers. Where are we going for bonus? All right, bonus uh, for for community. That's plus, yeah, that's 15, that's power, sorry. Okay. Um, of great importance nowadays is the study of invasive species, the effects of which can be dramatic on many ecosystems. For five points each, name these aquatic invasives. This invasive mollusk that is named after the stripes on its shell is a look-alike to the quagga mussel. These, this species re reproduces um, extremely rapidly, outcompeting native fauna. Well, I like five seconds. <laughs> Thoughts? Community? Arjun? Anybody? Quick. No, sorry. Uh, that would be the zebra mussel, is what we're looking for. Okay. Um, next. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, you don't have to buzz during um, bonus questions, by the yeah. way. Um, the only it. reason I'm buzzing is to set a 10-second timer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next. Uh, this jawless fish aggressively attacks other fish in the Great Lakes, leading to huge declines in native fish populations. It has facilitated the growth of the invasive alewife's population due to its removal of the alewife's predators. Uh, is that your actual answer, or make it obvious? Make it okay. Uh, no, sorry. Sea lamprey. It's a kind of looks like an eel. <laughs> okay. Finally, uh, this fish, native to the Indian and Pacific Oceans, threatens coral reef ecosystems due to competition with native feeder feeders and lack of predators. It is easily easily recognizable from its red and white stripes and long spike-like fins. That's not an answer, guys. Also, keep this to your um to your private yeah. chat. Um, for any discussion, please keep it in your own chat. Answers only in buzzing. Damselfish is not, not correct. Sorry, I don't believe so. Uh, lionfish is what we're looking for. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Right here. Uh, toss up. Once again, everybody can answer. Whenever Alan's ready. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> These specific organisms first appeared in the late Carboniferous period and are evolutionary, evolutionarily and structurally similar to uh, cordit cordatels. These plants are well known uh, for their forests in the northwest region of the United States. Instead of leaves, this type of tree has needles and pine cones uh, that can be found at its base. Examples of this division of plants include cedars, cypresses, and firs. For 10 points, uh, that is, uh, Beckendorf. Gymnosperm? I, do I prompt on this? I don't think so. No. Wait for a please buzz below. Alan? Uh, Jason, are you are oh, you doing this you? right now? Okay. My bad. Yes. Uh, not back and forth again. Sorry. Community. Community. Yes, conifer. Nice. Uh, that is not power. It was though. <clears throat> we are moving here to. Actually, I haven't skipped in a minute. Nice. Uh. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so for community uh, bonuses, um, for five points each, answer the following questions about various parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. The development of this detection technology provided one of the first major practical uses for microwaves as radio waves required antenna that were too large to be portable. This is a bonus. This is a bonus, so community can only respond. Uh, right. no. Okay, no answer. Uh, we're looking for radar. <laughs> okay, uh, next. This form of electromagnetic radiation has applications in thermal imaging, which is where a camera creates images according to differences in heat by the detection of this type of radiation. 
yeah. <laughs> Didn't even need to finish. <laughs> Infrared is correct. <clears throat> uh, all right, next. Uh, gamma rays are emitted from supernova and other similarly energetic objects, but they can also be emitted from this process where a radioactive nucleus emits a photon in the form of gamma radiation. I think that's pretty unanimous. Okay. Yes, gamma decay is correct, or decay in general. <clears throat> Good job. That's two. Cool. Uh... I should have printed this. Oh well. Next, toss up. Ready? Yes. Okay. One phase of this phenomenon is marked by cooler sea surface temperatures in the South Pacific Ocean. Community. Y yes. Nice. And so. Is that power? That is power. Yeah. Job. <clears throat> You're doing. All right, uh, bonus, also for community. Um, central to elementary algebra is the polynomial, a sum of co constants multiplied by varying integer powers of a variable. For five points each, answer the following questions about degree two polynomials. A polynomial whose highest degree term is x squared is usually called this term, a formula for finding values at which this kind of polynomial equals zero shares its name with the type of polynomial itself. And quadratic is correct. I'm going to like wait for the score to update. Uh, Alan, or I guess both of you, are we okay with me just barreling forward? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to keep going then. <clears throat> the sign of this quantity that, uh, that has its square root taken in the quadratic formula, that is whether it is positive, negative, or zero, determines whether a quadratic has zero, one, or two real roots. And discriminant is correct. Nice. Um, formula name for this 16th century mathematician relate the zeros of a quadratic or any polynomial to the coefficients of that same quadratic or polynomial. For example, the product of the zeros of a monic quartic, a quadratic, is equal to the constant term of that quadratic. <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's Vieta or uh, Viette. This is French name. Good job. I just got a notification. <clears throat> Toss up. We are doing okay. Hope you are ready. Okay. Toss up. Once again, anyone with the answer. Buzz in when you're ready. <clears throat> okay. The embedded JavaScript language can be used to generate code in this language with plain JavaScript. Uh, Cross-site uh, scripting vulnerabilities work because the injection is maliciously rendered in this language. In this language, the ampersand uh, LT semicolon and ampersand GT semicolon entities are needed as escape characters as they represent less than and greater than symbols, which are used in this language to denote tags. For 10 points, name this programming uh, community. Yeah, HTML. Good job. <clears throat> That's not power. Hello. Sorry. Welcome. Um, yeah, only requirement, camera on, keep your hand in frame during during questions. Yeah. While they're Thank you. And stay muted during the round as much as yeah. uh, except when you're answering. Thank you. Uh, where were we? Bonus. That's where we were. <clears throat> All right. Bonus community. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. These features often can protect the ecosystems of rivers by trapping pollutants, although at the expense of, their, of its own health. For five points each, identify these types of lakes, which form when a river erodes the neck of one of its meanders. They often form alongside meander scars and are typically U-shaped. Uh, yes, Oxbow Lake. <clears throat> This fluvial depositional feature is found on the inside bends of streams and rivers. It opposes the cut bank and grows in size as the ri uh, river meanders further. Yeah, point bar is correct. 
Uh, this type of stream is marked by multiple channels formed when the base level rises and sediment deposition increases. Uh, these types of streams are often found near river deltas uh, and have uh, relatively permanent mid-channel bars and have steep channel sides. Uh, no. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Close, or, but no, sadly. Okay, uh, one more from this first set. Okay, toss up, uh, all teams. That was two bonuses. Ready? Get ready to buzz. Sorry, the bot is down. Uh, give me oh. one moment. <laughs> well. Uh, okay, it should be back up now. Okay, nice. Um, one of the last simple machines invented, this simple machine uh, is vastly inefficient, usually around 15 to 20 percent. Oftentimes, these devices rely on device efficiency over mechanical advantage and convert a rotational motion into a linear motion. Most of the time, that is Sierra Vista. Screw. Okay, repeat that. I heard the a second screw? half. Screw? Screw, yeah, that's correct. Nice. Uh, that was... I think that was power, yeah. Okay. What is the bonus for this one? Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, Sierra Vista bonus. Um, whether it's by separating substances or solving crimes, chromatography sees a variety of uses in uh, chemical, chemical analysis. Excuse me. For five points each, this property of a substance explains why some substances travel further in certain solvents, as well as why oil and water don't mix. Serious though. Permeability. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, polarity is what we were going for. Um, next. Um, time does not begin now. <laughs> Uh, this number is the distance that substance travels divided by the distance that a solvent travels and can be used uh, to compare two unknown substances. Now's our time. Okay. Anything? No, sorry. Uh, retention factor. Factor, not fracture. Factor. Next. Uh, this attractive force allows water to travel up the stationary phase used in paper chromatography. I'm going to wait till time starts. Is that a final answer? All right. Sorry, no. Cohesion. Simpler than that. Okay, moving on. Uh, toss up. Once again, this is for everyone. Are you ready? An ancient problem in comp compass and straight edge construction attempts to construct one of these shapes with the same area as a given circle. It is now known to be impossible. Completing a uh, community. Square, yes. Uh, that's power. The buzz. All right, ready? <clears throat> uh, community. While the entropy of the universe is constantly increasing, there are always some things that remain constant. For five points each, answer the following questions about constants in chemistry. This is, guys, this is not the discussion. Please, thank you. Uh, this number refers to the amount of particles uh, contained in within one mole of a substance. I don't know why they wanted both. It's just Avogadro's number. Okay, anyway. Yeah, Avogadro's number. I don't know why they wanted the word number. Anyway. Um, written, written in energy divided by temperature, this constant is used, is used to define entropy as a statistical property.
Uh, is that your finalizer? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Boltzmann constant. Good job. Um, finally, this constant is commonly used to relate the pressure, temperature, and amount of a substance, and is defined as the previous two constants multiplied together. Uh, yeah. Yep. Gas constant or ideal gas constant. Good job. Toss up. This is the wrong one. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, host only, session secure, and HTTP only are all attributes of this term in computer science. Famously, DNS cache poisoning attacks can be used to malicious, uh, maliciously access these. Session hijacking is often ac accomplished by stealing one of these, so the best way to prevent such attacks is, letting, is through letting this information expire. For 10 points, name this uh, term for a packet of data locally stored on one's computer. Beckendorf? Cookie? Uh, yes, web cookies. I actually have cookies, because the last hint was about actual cookies. Anyway, fun fact. Fun fact over. <laughs> uh, all right, Beckendorf. Bonus. Hope you're ready. Alan, uh, wait, no, never mind. Yeah. <clears throat> Earth's magnetic field is responsible for many phenomena seen on our planet, for five points each. This phenomenon occurs near Earth's magnetic poles as charged particles from the sun and are re redirected by the magnetic field into the atmosphere where they ionize particles. Bergendorf, once again. Alright, yeah, Aurora is correct, good job. Um, <clears throat> this geologic phenomenon occurs as a result of Earth's magnetic field reversing polarity. It is observed primarily in younger oceanic crust near spreading ridges. Once again, this is Beckendorf only. Time, sorry. Uh, magnetic field stripes. Or just stripes. Mm -hmm or bands, or whatever you want. Okay, next. Uh, the circulation of molten iron and nickel in this layer of the Earth is responsible for generating Earth's magnetic field. <laughs> Mantle's finalizer? I want to co confirm that really quick. Give me a yes, no. Well, sorry, before time was up, so I'm just gonna go with that. Sorry, it is outer core. <laughs> so, yeah. Sometimes it works out that way. Oh well. So, next. Wait. Yeah. I'm gonna throw my nose. Okay. Next. Uh, saturated filter paper or glass tubes are typically used as one of two types of this device. Batteries are made up of mul multiple voltaic, voltaic cells, excuse me, which employs this device that typically contains electrolytes. There are two and half cells of in which ions Iolani. Electrode? Uh, no. Sorry. Sorry, the next one. Okay. Uh, two half cells in which ions flow from and to with the use of this device. As one half cell is for oxidation and the other for reduction, uh, this device is vital so that charges do not build up on either cell. For 10 points, name the device which connects the an uh, anode and cathode on in voltaic cells. Uh, community. Salt bridge, yes. Wow, okay. Uh, bonus is there. Okay. Bonus. Um, many modern electronic technologies are made possible through code. For five points each, answer the following questions relating to programming languages. C++ and Rust, but neither Python nor R, are both examples of this type of language that requires a translator to convert source code to machine code. 
This is community. Final answer? Yes, no, sorry. Compiled language. Uh, next. Um, this object-oriented compiled language is that is designed to be accessible and general purpose gets its name from uh, a type of Indonesian coffee. Did you know that it is run by more than 13 billion devices? Final answer? Yes, okay. Uh, yes, Java is correct. Nice. Um, this this low-level language is designed to communicate directly with the... Wow, nice wording. <laughs> uh, this this low-level language is to, uh, designed to commute with the, uh, communicate with the computer directly, where each statement often corresponds to one machine instruction, but is distinct from machine code in that it is usually more easily readable by people. I need a final answer, guys. Uh, no, we're looking for assembly. That is way, way, way higher. <laughs> Ruby and Python are both way, way, way higher. <clears throat> uh, next. There you go. Uh, two, okay. Uh, toss up. Ready? Okay. The energy for interactions between particles is thought to be controlled by carrier carriers of this quantity. For two massive particles, an inverse square law determines the gravitational variety of this quantity. Community. Force is correct. That's power. John. <clears throat> yeah, mid. Okay. Next. Next. Uh, bonus. To make data more easily uh, accessible and useful, summary statistics are often drawn up to paint a general picture of a data set without diving into too many specifics. For five points each, this statistic measures the center of a data set, and for discrete sets, it is defined as the value or values that appears the most frequently. I need a final answer. Mode is correct. Good job. Next, uh, this measure of the spread of data is the average square distance from the mean. It is also equal to the square of the standard deviation. I need a final answer. Variance is correct. Good job. <clears throat> Next, uh, this statistic that measures dependence, usually denoted with the letter R, ranges between negative and positive one. It reflects the degree to which two variables are linearly correlated. Is that a final answer? Regression is not correct. This is, we're looking for the Pearson correlation coefficient. I also I just noticed that you know, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, toss up. You're on there. Okay, ready. I'm gonna make sure I don't miss anything. Give me one moment. I need to check something. Sorry, sorry. All right, we're back. <laughs> My bad. All right, toss up once again for everybody. Uh, this series is the inverse of the Goldick uh, dissolution series, which describes the w rate of weathering. Community. Yes, nice power by a lot too. <laughs> Good job. Good buzz. Um, <clears throat> I'm going up here. All right, 
Uh, there are four major types, this is a bonus, uh, there are four major types of macromolecules that compose living organisms. For five points each, identify the laboratory techniques uh, related to each to the classes of macromolecules. Excuse me. Um, this substance turns to, to a color yellow-red from blue in the presence of a certain type of carbohydrate. This substance will not react with complex carbohydrates, but will react with reducing sugars. Yes? Okay. Yes, Benedict's is correct. <clears throat> Next. In this technique, DNA strands are heated to be separated and then cooled so that primers can attach new pairs to the original strand. Hundreds of copies of DNA can be created with the help of an enzyme for which this technique is named after. Give the full... Yeah. Yeah, polymerase uh, chain reaction. Good job. And finally... Uh, this analytical technique uses gel electrophoresis to identify the presence of proteins in a given sample. In this technique, the gel is applied to a membrane that is exposed to antibodies. You guys are going way faster, but yeah. Western blot. Good job. Nice. Uh, you're doing that one. Ready? Okay. Uh, this hormone is typically created within the hypothalamus to aid in breastfeeding. Oftentimes, this... Uh, Beckendorf. Oxytocin. Yep, oxytocin is correct. Uh, that's power. For Beckendorf. Bonus. <clears throat> uh, for five points each, answer the following questions about relativity and frames of reference. Objects will continue to follow their motion unless acted upon uh, by an outside force in this frame of motion, where uh, the laws of physics are simplest. Beckendorf. Uh, yeah, yes, actually, inertial frame of reference is correct. Nice. <laughs> I, I'll, I'm going to... I'll give you that. <laughs> nice. You look, I don't know, something about that felt really un unconfident. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> because of this phenomenon, the clock for an astronaut measuring how fast light travels on their ship is slower than someone on Earth. Final answer? Yes, time dilation. Good job. Uh, in 2021, this scientist's black hole theorem, where the area uh, of a black hole should never decrease, was confirmed for the first time. And, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Stephen Hawking was, uh, is correct. Good job. Sorry, I misinterpreted that. Okay, next up. Uh, Toss-up. Okay, ready? Clinical term required. Characterized by an itching, redness, and in some cases, drainage of the ear canal uh, community. Uh, no, sorry. <clears throat> uh, drainage of the ear canal. This disease is often, is oftentimes, yes, Sierra Vista. Yes. <laughs> nice, that's power. Um, uh, is power minus 10 or an incorrect answer in power minus 10 or minus, no, five? minus 5? Still, okay, just making sure. <clears throat> uh, okay, we are going here for Sierra Vista, right? Yeah. Weather phenomena are often difficult to predict, though they often follow similar and predictable pa predictable patterns throughout development and seasons. For five points each, any storms with strong winds may push water towards a beach surface and force water much higher above the highest astronomical tide. Name this phenomenon of a sudden onrush of water associated with storms to making landfall. Timer didn't start, but yeah. Uh, is that final answer? <clears throat> Yes, uh, storm surge or surge. Okay, um, 
Strong updrafts and thunderstorm systems may cause ice to freeze around nuclei uh, and aggrade layers such as ice particles. As uh, excuse me, aggrade layers as these ice particles travel in vertical wind systems. Name this type of precipitation at, uh, that these large spheres of ice dropping from the sky represent. Is that final? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, hell. Um. <clears throat> Finally, uh, this quant quantity is the rate at which an atmospheric variable, often temperature, changes with altitude. This quantity is the subject of two different uh, meteorological... Oh, you already said it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's correct. Lapse rate. I'm not going to finish. <laughs> Good job. Next, toss-up. How long till that question? Okay. Hold on. <clears throat> Next. Because of because this state of matter experiences no surface tension, Miller, are you withdrawing or withdraw? Okay. I, I forgot to let you I forgot to let you start the question. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no surface tension. It is used for drying sub, sub, some substances, most notably aerogels. In this state, a substance has properties of both liquids and gases, giving it the ability to effuse. That is Iolani. Uh, I'm going to assume that's a typo. Yes, supercritical is correct. Nice. Uh, that is power also. We are going through here. For Iolani. <clears throat> For five points each, answer the following questions about explosions in chemistry. This type of high temperature redox re reaction utilizes a fuel to produce typically gaseous products such as water and carbon dioxide. Sorry, final answer. Okay, uh, no, combustion is what we're looking for. Okay, next. Uh, explosions are characterized by a rapid increase in volume as well as a release of energy. This type of process involves the transfer of energy from a system to its surroundings. Final answer? Oh, okay, it has to be. Uh, no, exothermic is the term. <clears throat> Finally. Uh, this type of explosive comp compounds are characterized by deflagration uh, or a low rate of reaction. Uh, though, uh, though its name may suggest a lack of destructive potential, they can all still be highly dangerous. Common examples include black powder and smokeless uh, powder. Fireworks? <laughs> No, sorry. That is low explosives. Uh, we are on six, 12, 13, 14. We're about to start 15, uh, Alan. <clears throat> cool. Okay, uh, toss up down here. I believe, wait. Toss up. Uh, ready? Okay. Fermi questions usually ask for an estimation of the order of this term, approximately equivalent to the logarithm. Community. Uh, no. Uh, approximately equivalent to the logarithm of the quantity in question. Yolani. Exponent? No. Um, Miller. <laughs> Power? No. Sorry. Magnitude is what we're looking for. Uh, questions dead after three. Sorry. Three teams. Magnitude. Terminology. Order of magnitude. We don't say order of power, <laughs> typically. That's... Uh... Wait, I need to mark this. Excuse me. Is this a skipped one?
Oh, that's the first one. That's really impressive. Okay, next. Ooh. Uh, toss up. Let me reset that. <laughs> okay. Ready? While this substance makes up the majority of the atmosphere of Saturn's sixth largest moon, community. Methane, no, sorry. Uh, it is only found in trace it is only found in trace amounts in Earth's atmosphere. In nuclear power production, this substance uh, moderates the nuclear re uh, nuclear reaction. Until recently, the Kelvin temperature scale was based on a value measured using this substance. And this change was officially made in 2019. Yolani? Nitrogen? Uh, no, sorry. For 10 points, uh, name this substance, which the person reading the question... Beckendorf? Mercury, no. That would be really bad for this next one. Uh, for 10 points, name this uh, name this substance which the person reading this question is about to take a drink of. Yeah, it's water. <laughs> I had some physical stuff prepared for that one. <laughs> Skip bonus again for this one, which is three here. Where is one? All right, next, uh, toss-up. Okay, <clears throat> ready? This law can be used to determine the habitability of a planet by calculating orbital parameters from its transit light curve. Specifically, knowing the drop in brightness and applying this law can help find the orbital distance between a planet and its star. Iolani? Inverse square is not correct, sorry. Community. Yes, Kepler's third is what we're after. Nice. Uh, that's not power. By a tiny bit. Sorry. Uh, we are on to there. Okay. Arithmetic has many strange looking symbols to denote various operations on numbers. So bonus for five points each. This is uh, this is a bonus for five points each. For long sequences, the capital Greek letter sigma may be used to denote this operation performed ac across all terms of the sequence. This operation on a sequence produces a series. Yes, yeah, summation or sum addition is what we're technically after, but that works too. Hmm. Next, uh, this operation is often denoted using an x dot asterisk or sometimes no symbol at all if it is clear the operation is being performed. Final answer, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Multiplication is correct. Finally, multiplication can possibly th be thought of as repeated addition and exponentiation as repeated multiplication. Repeated exponentiation, however, is often denoted using an quote up arrow, is this operation. <clears throat> Tree? No. <laughs> That's. That's a lot further up the <laughs> tetration is what we're after. <laughs> yeah, tree is a bit bigger than that. <laughs> All right, next. <clears throat> Here. Okay, <clears throat> toss up. Tails. Tail call optimization can be used in conjunction with this technique to prevent errors when running a program. In particular, stack overflows are often caused by this programming technique when it is used poorly. However, dynamic programming techniques and uh, uh, memoization can be used instead, often resulting in a less resource-intensive algorithm. For 10 points, what is this term? Best defined as this term. Best defined as this term. Best defined as this term. Community. <laughs> Looping is not correct. Uh, no, no penalty on that. Miller. That was already said. Finally, uh, Beckendorf. <clears throat> no. 
That was actually right, it is recursion. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, luckily, that was all after the question ended, so no penalties. Uh, <clears throat> we are looking at that. Wait. Yeah. It's this one. All right, <clears throat> let's keep going. We're getting further. Uh, this one, okay. <clears throat> this planet was known to ancient Chinese astronomers as the Sui Xing. Pioneer uh, 10 was the first space spacecraft to conduct a flyby uh, community. Jupiter, yes. That's power. Nice one. <clears throat> uh, bonus. <clears throat> Ready? Hopefully. Okay. For five points each, answer the following questions about magnetism. All materials exhibit weak forms of this type of magnetism in which a, the susceptibility is less than zero, so the application of a ma magnetic field induces a polarization which op opposes the applied field. <clears throat> The final answer? Paramagnetism? No, diamagnetism <clears throat> is the correct answer. Next, uh, the magnetic B field or magnetic flux density is measured in this SI unit named after a Serbian American inventor equivalent to one kilogram per second squared per ampere. Time's up. That would be Tesla, Serbian um, uh, American inventor. Okay, next. <clears throat> if magnetic dipoles were observed, um, were observed separating into these hypothetical particles, Gauss's law for magnetism would need to account for the magnetic charge density. Coulombs is not correct, sorry. Magnetic monopoles. All right, uh, we are getting close to the end, so good luck, everyone. Final five full, full rounds. We have five more full rounds. Okay, next. Ready? <clears throat> This structure located in the ear is made up of two main parts, the head and the manubrium, or handle. This bone makes contact with both the tensor tympani and the tympanic membrane. For human hearing, this... Uh, Beckendorf. Malleus. Malleus, yes. On the final word of power, good job. <laughs> Which is power. Okay. Uh... Next. <clears throat> Bonus. Whether it's a diamond necklace or the lead in a mechanical pencil, both materials are solid forms of carbon. For five points each, diamond or graphite are two structurally different forms of solid carbon, thus they are called this term. <clears throat> Feed discussion to your own channel, please, and then just give me an answer. I'm just taking that as the final answer. No, sorry. Allotrope is the word. Next, this is the name for the smallest portion of a crystal lattice that shows the entire structure of the compound. <clears throat> that final answer? Yeah. Sorry, unit cell. Got one of the words. <clears throat> if someone wants to check that actually, but I don't think I don't think so. Anyway, next. 
This is the type of bond that carbon forms that allows it to form compounds of such varying strength, sharing electrons between atoms, named this bond. Are we final? Yes? Yeah, covalent is correct. Good job. <clears throat> okay, next. This, uh, I'm gonna wait for the thing to start. <laughs> All right. This man, tragically, was found dead at his home in, at age 41 due to cyanide poisoning just two years after being convicted for gross indecency in 1952. Conway's Game of Light is one system that has a certain property whose variance namesake is this person. For 10 points, name this English computer scientist and mathematician who is most well known for his huge contributions towards cracking the enigma. Uh, Sierra Vista. Yep, Alan Turing is correct. Okay. Um, I just want to make a quick note. Um, formula, formula unit is not synonymous with unit cell, so there will be no change to scoring. Okay, thanks. Just want to make sure. Okay, uh, we are up to here for Sierra Vista. Okay, ready? DNA is what makes every person unique for five points each. This principle states that the purines and pyridamines in DNA must have the same percentage, respectively. <clears throat> this is for Sierra Vista. Anything? Time. Sorry. Shargoff's rule is what the answer is. <clears throat> All right, next. DNA is primarily composed of these organic molecules, which consist of a nitrogenous base, a sugar, and a phosphate group. Once again, it's here, Mr. Final answer, or... All right, I'm taking that. No, nucleotide is the name. <clears throat> Finally, um, this nucleobase is contained in RNA as opposed to its DNA counterpart, thymine. Final answer? Yeah. Yep, you're a cell. Nice. Uh, we are on to there. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> Toss up for everyone. Hope we're ready. Alan. Thank you. Uh, in aqueous solutions, this state is usually determined in the presence of chemically inactive electrolytes like sodium nitrate. Although the law of mass action, which tries to describe this state, is generally invalid, it correctly gives this state for a reaction that as a constant. Uh, Beckendorf. Equilibrium. Yes, equilibrium. And that's power. <clears throat> Bonus. Yeah, cool. For Beckendorf. <clears throat> Edward Bernard was a f famous astronomer and uh, astrophotographer with multiple features in the sky named after him, for five points each. An example of this type of object is Bernard's loop, which is part of the Orion molecular cloud complex. This object appears as a patchy red area in the night sky. Uh, no, sorry. It's a little more specific. Actually, I'll, I'll look. <clears throat> yeah, see if you can. I'll, I'll if you can get it right now, then I'll give it to you. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, emission nebula is what we're looking for, or nebula or a supernova rem remnant. Got to be a little more specific. Okay. That's just what's underlined on my notes. All right, next. <clears throat> Barnard's star is this type of object, which appears dim in the night sky, despite being the second closest star to the sun other than the Alpha Centauri system. <clears throat> uh, 
I need an answer. I'm just taking the final consideration. Okay. <clears throat> Red dwarf is the answer. Oh. <laughs> Can you like give me a sec? All right. Don't mind my roommate. He's just here. Okay. Next. Um, Bernard's first telescope was of this general type, which uses lenses to focus the light and is subject to chromatic aberration due to the use of lenses. This is still bonus. So. Uh, no, sorry. Refractor telescope. So no. All right. Uh, next. Mm, we are. I just need to remind myself where we are. Okay. Ah, right. For uh, toss up next. We have just a couple more. Okay. In geometry, this man's theorem states that the intersections of the possibly extended size of a hexagon are collinear if the hexagon lies in a conic. A programming language named in honor of this man was released, was released in 1970 and was very prominent, especially before the C programming language rose in popularity in the 1980s. A triangle named for this man, uh, community. Yes, Pascal. Uh, and that is not power, so that would be. Okay, next. This one. <clears throat> Bonus for community. Uh, the internet is central to many of our lives in the modern world. For five points each, answer the following questions regarding the internet. Uh, this protocol, part of the transport layer of a certain protocol suite, is responsible for the reliable transmission of data packets across the internet. Final answer? Yes? Uh, sorry, no. TCP, or uh, Transmission Control Protocol, is the name. Next. Um, answer with uh, answer with the full name. Uh, this type of attack is orchestrated by a single system by bombarding a traffic target network with traffic, triggering a cat crash, and rendering the service unusable. Is that the final answer? Okay. Uh, no, sorry. Denial of service. Yeah. <clears throat> or DOS. Or, yeah. Next. Uh, clicking on one of these things, uh, DDoS would have been an ANSI prompt. Yeah, DOS, not DDOS. Yeah, DDoS is a subset of this. <clears throat> okay, uh, final part of this bonus. Clicking on one of these things, very common in websites, will bring you to a different website. Often they point to URL addresses. Final answer? Yeah. Yep. Or hyperlink is the full name. <clears throat> nice. Um, we are getting close to the end. We have one more full round, and then we have some skip bonuses, and then we have a final question. So get ready for that. Okay. This one. <clears throat> ready? Toss up. Four of these components are contained in a Wheatstone bridge, which is used to measure a property of the aforementioned components. Uh, community, sorry. Yeah, resistor. That's, uh, that's power. And the final uh, full point bonus. Okay. Um, all right. Much of science is based around empiricism, using experimentation to draw conclusions about the world. For five points each, this method of reasoning, as opposed to de deductive reasoning, uh, involves combining observations and evidence to draw probable but not certain conclusion. 
and community. I need an answer. Theoretical? Is that the final answer? No. Inductive reasoning. Is okay, next. Um this 15th to 16th century English philosopher, often seen as the father of empiricism and the develop and a developer of the scientific method, argued strongly for inductive reasoning. Is that a final answer? Yes? Okay. Yeah, Francis Bacon is correct. Nice. <clears throat> uh, and finally, uh, in a famous demonstration of empiricism, this Italian scientist showed that the speed at which bodies fall does not depend on mass by dropping spheres of varying sizes off the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Final answer? Yes? Yeah, Galileo. Or Galileo Galilei. Nice. So that includes our main portion. We have a little bit left. So... First, here are the standings. Community with 240, Beckendorf in second with 90, Sierra Vista with 60, uh, Kennedy with zero, Iolani and Miller both with minus five, negative five. Uh, ties will be broken based on, uh, well, we'll see if there are actually any ties at the end, but if there are any ties, we'll break them from the written exam. Okay, we have a few bonuses that we skipped, so I'm going to actually read them out loud. I don't know if Alan added the last bit yet. <laughs> Um, for which question? <clears throat> or, or, sorry, what are you talking about? Uh, Bacon and Galileo, did you add for both? Uh, Jason's doing that. Okay. Added. <clears throat> okay. Yes, um, so for these skipped bonuses, I will, we will answer them like a toss, we'll answer, answer them like a toss-up. So, Yes, buzz. But remember, these are really short, so good luck. <laughs> um, once again, I, I'll say afterward if it's an easy, medium, or hard part. Because that'll help with the scoring. So remember, Jason, if you're doing scorekeeping, one for easy, two for medium, three for hard, minus two for anything incorrect. Cool? Uh, actually, we should do minus three, just because it's so short. Okay, fine. <laughs> minus three. I think. We're still, as you can tell, we're kind of figuring it out. <clears throat> okay, finally. All right, let's do this. Ready. This is the lead in, so don't buzz during this, please. Neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's are devastating to the brain for five points each. Okay, now this is the where the question begins. Ready. This neurotransmitter is most closely associated with Alzheimer's, a deficiency. Backendorf. Acetylcholine. Yes, nice. That's medium, so two. <clears throat> I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna rapid fire, so good luck. Um, this brain function is what Alzheimer's mainly affects and is dedicated, back and again. Memory. Memory, yes. <clears throat> That's one. Uh, this is the main cause. That's, why are we at four? That should be plus one, Jason. Okay, anyway. Okay, this is the main cause for why Alzheimer's patients' brains shut down over time, leading to neuron death. Uh, Sierra Vista. <clears throat> uh, yes, that is right. Good job. Three points. Okay, we have, I think, two more, so good luck. This is lead-in, not part of the question. A state function in thermodynamics is a property which does not depend on the path taken to reach the state. For five points each, name each name the state function described in each question. Okay, you ready to buzz? Okay, this state function is expressed through SI units of pascals and is inversely proportional to the volume uh, community. Uh, pressure is correct. Wait for me to acknowledge you before answering, please. <clears throat> okay. Next. Was this, that easy? Oh, that was easy. That was easy. One point. Okay. This state function is a form of energy uh, re generally represented by the letter H and is expressed in natural variables of pressure and entropy. Uh, Beckendorf. Enthalpy. Yeah, enthalpy. That's three. <clears throat> Finally, 
Uh, the third law of thermodynamics predicts that this state function approaches absolute z as this state function approaches absolute zero. Uh, community and temperature. That's two. Good job. <clears throat> and I think this is the last one. And we'll have a bonus toss up at the very end. So finally. For five for x points each, answer the following questions about file formats. I'll wait for Buzz to show up. Thank you. Okay, portable network graphics, raw, and joint uh, photographic experts group are all formats of this type of file. That would be Beckendorf. PNG. Uh, no. Wait for the to show up. Uh, Sierra Vista. JPG, no. Finally, community. Photos. Alan, this is your call. Um, I want. I'm inclined to say no because photos are okay. specifically taken. Okay, sorry, no. Image is the correct answer. That's uh, yeah. Next. <laughs> Okay, images and text formatting may both be stored using this file format developed by Adobe in 1992, meant to make sharing documents easy. Uh, Iolani. PDF is correct, that's two. And finally, uh, 0x cafe babe are the bytes used to denote this information in java.class files, which are the opening bits of a file used to convey information to computers uh, Beckendorf. Metadata? Uh, no. Sorry. Uh, which are used to convey information uh, to computers regarding a file's identity. Five, four, three, two, nobody? Oh, last second. Yeah, Iolani. Key. No, sorry. <laughs> We're looking for a file signature, also known as a magic number. Time was up. Um, Jason, I don't believe you subtracted points from Beckendorf and Yolani. I might be playing a little catch up right now. <laughs> ah, yeah, he is. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Sorry, time was up. All right, we have one final question. This is a toss up for everybody. I'm going to give you the category, which is miscellaneous other. I'm just going to tell you that. Okay, final toss-up. Hope you all are ready. Let's have some fun. Okay, <laughs> trash. If you play if you play Quizzle before, you know this is what trash is. Okay, next. <laughs> all right, go ahead and start. Colin. <clears throat> okay. This website, named as a portmanteau, was created in 2016 and now has tens of thousands of distinct users of all ages. On the Iolani. Yep, nice. Silentpia.com is the answer. Oh, Claude, uh, would you like to read the rest of this? Yeah, the... I'm going to read the rest of this. On the birdso.org main page, a large yellow button directs users to this site. This website is where you competitors took the written exam for this event. For 10 points, name this website where online science Olympiad tournaments have largely been hosted since fall 2021, where most events um, for Birdso were completed. And uh, Hugo would like to add that uh, we would have prompted on statesioli.org. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> it just wasn't large scale. Everybody was using it at the time. Okay, so that concludes uh, the, that was power by the way, <laughs> in case I wasn't clear. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so that concludes the buzzer round. We're actually right on time, which is amazing. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are right on time. We're actually going to run a tiny bit late. But anyway, thank you all for being here. Uh, that was Science Quiz Bowl Buzz Around Division B. Congratulations to community for a great showing. We're going to review a couple things before final results, but there you go.
So good job. Uh, final score, Community 246, Beckendorf 91, Sierra Vista 61, Iolani 12, Kennedy 0, and Miller minus or negative 5. Okay, these are the results as of now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Division C is about to start, so <laughs> uh, thank you all for being here and for participating. Congratulations to all of you for making it to the top six. That's an accomplishment in itself. And yeah, I hope to see all of you soon in the future. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, should we move to main C? Then it's really boring. I'm it's gonna like, right back. Sorry. It's, yeah, no it's, it's, then it's your. It's because of microphone things. You like we can't require that at all. Can we suggest? Uh, it? Can we encourage it? it? Yeah, yeah, it's I'll, a little. I'll make like, a note to, to please do that if okay. possible. I have to go like, to the bathroom. We can't require it definitely. Okay. Uh, I will join. Wait. Uh, I will Robert, join. Are you C live? Or Eric, I guess. Or one of them. Are you? Oh, are I'm you live right now? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, wait, I, wait, wait uh, <laughs> apparently the audio is still streaming. Uh, in the meantime, um, Tesla STEM, will your other two participants be uh, participating? Yes, they will. Just okay. Them. And I assume the same for Troy? Yes. Great, thank you. Um, did she answer some questions? Oh, sorry, Jonah, did you have a question? Okay, well, um, someone in, in their channel is asking uh, camera setup. Uh, we want to have um, your faces show, but when you answer a question, such as a toss-up or bonus, uh, your hand has to be within the camera frame. Uh, this, is just, this is just to prevent uh, anyone from blowing answers. Um, yeah, so showing your keyboard also works. Um, but we ultimately we want your face. Um, and yes, you can use your phone camera. I believe you can join uh, Discord VCs with two um, from two lens. For those that just joined, we will be starting in uh, six minutes at two forty p.m. Pacific time or 5.40 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, yes, you may unmute during bonuses. Um, we encourage people to answer verbally uh, with their microphone on. Um, but if oh, your microphone doesn't work, then um, you may use uh, the channels. Uh, for Luke, yes, you may join on two devices. Yeah. 
Um, I'll go over the the. Tissue. We'll go over more details when we do everything at the same time, all together. Welcome to whoever just joined. We'll be starting in five minutes. Yeah. How many of you guys are were watching, by the way, just now? <laughs> just for fun. While we're hanging out a little bit. Wow, nice. There's a link to the stream. My uh, voice is going to probably get it's probably kind of get very tired, so apologies in advance. Um, if we want to start on time, we can have everyone turn on their camera. Mm -hmm. All right, make sure you have an angle that works. I just have blur on. I don't know if you want something more solid. Just so that I have someone in the background. Maybe we do... Maybe we go to some place in the middle of nowhere. Okay, anyway. Uh, lastly, if you have not changed your team name to or your Discord username to the same um, format it's as your so other competitors, cool. just change it. It's just for better ordering. Thank you. Yeah, it'll make it easier for us to see. Okay. We are, oh, I forgot to randomize for a second. Um, is Robert or Eric here? And can you turn up the reader's volume? Apparently it's hard to hear on stream. Cool. Great, thanks, Eric. Test, test, by the way. Okay. Um, someone is asking to make the reader's volume higher because it's hard to hear. In I just, just mentioned that. that. Sorry, I was not paying attention. No problem. We are going to get started soon. Can we get a quick roll? Roll call? Let's see. One, uh, two, thank three, four, thankfully, it's for the assorted Discord usernames. Everyone is here except Tesla's stem. Um, yeah. And we're obligated to check. Everyone here is over 13, right? Yeah, okay. just in case. <laughs> Uh, do we know where the last person is? <laughs> if he like joins later, is that fine? Yes. Okay, because like we don't know where he is right now, but he oh. might show up. Okay. Well, we're gonna have like ten minutes or so of going over rules, so you got a bit of buffer. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see if there's anything else. The way this. Okay. One minute. Um, stream's going okay, hopefully. Just want to check in. If so, we're going to be going. And we're going to get started pretty, pretty soon.
Uh, I believe um, the stream right now. Uh, Eric, can you check the stream if you're here? Um, there's a pop up on that end. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me do this. Okay. Okay, thank you. And 440. Okay, let's go. So, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to Science Quiz Bowl uh, Division C uh, here at 2020, the 2022 uh, Briso Satellite. Um, this is the buzzer round, and I hope you are all ready. Uh, congratulations first for all making it this far to the top six. And um, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk some rules. So <clears throat> let's get this all out of the way. Format rules. OK. Let's do this. OK. So uh, 24, we will have 24 toss-up bonus cycles. Um, so toss-ups are going to be kind of like a about a paragraph. Uh, bonuses are, we'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, there are six categories, physics, chemistry, biology, earth space, computer science and miscellaneous. Miscellaneous means math, interdisciplinary, current events, other stuff. <clears throat> uh, so that's 24 toss-ups, 24 bonuses, and we have one extra at the back that you'll see. Um, you shouldn't need to get any pen, scratch paper, or anything like that, because this is only, there won't be any computational questions, at least no straight computational questions. Okay. For toss-ups, uh, they will be, <clears throat> Um, toss-ups will be read, they're kind of in a pyramidal style, so the first hint is usually harder than the next, and all the way down to the bottom where it's a bit simpler. Um, <clears throat> when a buzzing cycle starts, uh, Alan, can you do the command? <laughs> yeah, you will see this show up. Uh, Science quiz bird will show, please buzz below with a bunch of lines, <clears throat> with a long line. You can, after that message, you can buzz in and with either the word buzz or BZ, and then it will recognize you. There we go. <clears throat> and the first person who buzzes will be recognized. Uh, I will probably say your name or say the uh, team name as well. <clears throat> what do you guys want me to call you? Uh, Academy for Health Medical Sciences. What do you want me to call this? Academy yeah, for Academy? Academy works. OK, yeah. I'll just do that then. <clears throat> um, wait till I, if you can, please wait till I uh, say something or recognize your team, because I need to stop reading anyway. <clears throat> um, you know, If you decide to blurt out an answer, uh, we will count that as incorrect and probably move on. <clears throat> Uh, after recognition, you will have 10 seconds to uh, answer to begin your answer. I'm going to be a little bit lenient because latency and it's online. <laughs> um, you may speak or type your answer. We prefer if you say it out loud because it's more fun that way. But if you can't, we understand. Uh, <clears throat> please make it obvious that your uh, what you're answering is actually your final answer. Uh, I will often just say. Is that your final answer? Just tell me yes or final answer or something. Just so I know um, and that you're not trying to do something else. Um, if you decide not to answer the question, uh, and yeah, anyone from the same team can answer. So generally how it works is that somebody knows the answer, so they'll buzz and answer right after. But it doesn't have to be. <clears throat> um, let's see. If you um, answer, if you uh, buzz and you realize, wait, I don't. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, you may withdraw your buzz for no penalty, but you'll also not be able to buzz again. <clears throat> if you get the question wrong while the question is still being read, so if you interrupt me while I'm reading uh, and you get the question wrong, you will uh, receive a five-point penalty. Otherwise, you can just keep going. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, if it's after the end of the question, uh, you will be able to. Uh, you will not receive a penalty. Uh, a question will be dead. That is, um, 
the uh, question is considered dead, that is, no one can answer it anymore, if uh, three teams answered the question incorrectly, or I finish reading the question, we wait for about five seconds, and nobody says anything. Okay, uh, and then I'll just keep going. <clears throat> Let me check. Uh, for conferring, you may confer with one another. Um, right, um, so if, oh yeah, I should do this first. Uh, on the account, if an incorrect answer is uh, given, I will say that it's incorrect, and then you will see please buzz below show up again. Only after that, the first buzz after the new please buzz below line is drawn uh, will be recognized. So don't try to buzz in before that shows up. <clears throat> We're um, going to try to make thing, this quick as well. Yep. Uh, another thing, please do not spam buzzes. Um, if you spam buzzes, we just won't, won't acknowledge you. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. For conferring, if you want to confer with your teammates, you can. You have private text channels. Uh, also, for bonuses, you can feel free to do that via voice because no one else is answering. Um, just keep in mind that you have quite a bit of time. You, you, just keep in mind that you don't have that much time. So plan that wisely. <laughs> yeah, so um, you may not discuss with your teammates while the question is being read, but after somebody buzzes, you're, it's free game. Just remember you only have 10 seconds. <clears throat> Uh, for scoring, for toss-ups, uh, there is a designated point in each question uh, before which is considered power, which is worth 15 points if you answer correctly during that period. I will not tell you when that is until after you've already, uh, until you answer correctly. If you answer correctly, I'll tell you that it's power. Um, <clears throat> if it's after power, it will be worth 10 points. I'll say not power usually. Um, yeah. Incorrect answers, I already mentioned, five point penalty. If it's during the question, no penalty after the question is finished reading. Uh, there will be some cases where um, I might, where you might give an answer that is too or not specific enough. If it is too specific, I will tell you anti prompt and possibly just say, can you be less specific <clears throat> or can you be more general? And a prompt, which means that you gave an answer that's probably partially correct. Um, these will be noted down where in my uh, notes here, and I will tell you to please elaborate or be more specific. <clears throat> yeah. I already did, <laughs> Alan. Okay. Um, <clears throat> after that point, um, you will have you'll have you'll have time to do that. Okay. And I have to. I guess I'll emphasize this really quick. Um, please make it really obvious that what your what your answer is is actually your final answer, and I will talk about it. Okay. Next, bonuses. If a team answers a bonus correctly, that team will be uh, will be allowed to answer a bonus question, <clears throat> which is worth fifteen points total. There are three parts: an easy, medium, and hard part. The um, each worth five points. They won't necessarily be in the order easy, medium, hard. And hence, if you get one part wrong, you can continue and do the next part. <clears throat> there will also be a lead-in to each of the bonus sets, which is uh, just a bit of context usually, maybe a hint for one of the parts. Um, <clears throat> you do not have, uh, there is no buzzing for that, so you can just wait for the question to finish, and you'll have 10 seconds after I finish reading the question to give an answer. You can technically not answer the question, but there's no penalty for a wrong answer, so you might as well just take a guess. <clears throat> uh, and I will accept the first answer that's dedicated as final or directed. So once again, I'll ask, is that your final answer? Or just write final answer or you know, directed or something. Make it clear. <clears throat> After all three parts of a bonus are read, or we cycle through all three parts, uh, we will <clears throat> uh, I'll read the next toss up. And we'll kind of go back and forth, toss-up bonus, toss-up bonus. <clears throat> uh, I am not a master of everything or an expert on everything. So um, so if you decide to, um, so if, I, if you realize that I did something wrong or I misinterpreted something, let me know. We'll check it, and you might get your points back. <clears throat> OK. Uh, 
If somebody disconnects or some other internet issue shows up, we will wait till the end of the question and deal with it at that point. That's simple as that. Uh, for cheating in camera microphone policy, <clears throat> first of all, we encourage all of you to actually, once again, to answer vo uh, verbally if possible. Just It makes it a lot more fun. Uh, cameras must be on. I see all of you have already done that. Uh, while the question is being, while each question is being read, I ask if one hand is in frame. You can like rest it on your chin or something if you really want. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that it's in frame so we see that you're not like you know frantically typing. <laughs> um, and if we uh, please keep your microphone muted while questions are being read, or if you're not answering, just to keep the chaos from keep the chaos contained a little bit. Uh, and finally, um, I and any of the other tournament directors, volunteers, reserve the right to eject you, uh, eject and DQ a team for any misconduct or cheating or any of those things. Uh, I hope I don't have to do that, but it may happen with no appeal. So just keep that in mind. Right, we are live on stream, so don't say anything that you wouldn't want to show up on stream, please. Okay. Any questions? Ask them in main, by the way, just to keep the buzzing channel a little bit cleaner. I th oh yeah, and uh, I'm going to do a quick psych one cycle uh, as an example, and I'm also actually there's one other thing I want to show you talk about, but we'll do that in a second. First, any questions right now? <clears throat> No? Okay. One final thing. Uh, remember, bonuses are only answered, uh, will only be answered if um, a team uh, gets, uh, gets the toss-up correct. So in the, in the event that there aren't, uh, that a toss-up gets, or in, a, in the event that a bonus gets skipped, um, you will, I will read them at the end for three, uh, for six points total. Uh, one point for easy, two points for medium, three points for hard. This is just for fun, but also to recognize our event supervisors for their work. Uh, incorrect answers is minus three for that case. So you get a three-point penalty for each of the if for wrong answers. Any questions? I will remind you of that when we get there. <laughs> if there are no questions, I will do a quick sample round uh, for no points. This is just the sample questions that were on the format document, and this is just to kind of get you into the format a little bit, okay? <clears throat> so, hope you all are ready. Once you see the line show up, you can, that'll begin. And also, this my setup is not, someone's going to, can one of the volunteers, like, yell or something, uh, tell me to stop? Because I don't have it, I have my, the questions are all on mobile for me, and I don't have have this pulled up on mobile so if someone can like yell at me to stop that will help well sorry stop when uh when when someone buzzes i just won't be looking at discord really right now oh okay. sample question cool okay sorry this is just for sample just for the sample yeah got it okay so toss up uh, the wave function of this particle can, uh, is written as the product of the usual spatial part and spin part sigma where sigma is usually stop up. yep caramel Electron. Uh, electron is correct. That's probably power. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now this is kind of so now we would turn it over to Carmel. Anybody from your school can answer. Um or anybody from your team can answer these bonus questions. Each is worth five points. An atom of these elements, this is from ACF Fall. Uh, an atom of each of these elements would act as a deactivating group in an electrophilic aromatic si uh, substitution reaction for five points each. Name this group of elements. All of these elements, except the lightest, are exemplary leaving groups in SN2 reactions and form strong diatomic acids with hydrogen. Halogens. Now you can answer. Yeah, halogens. Halogens, yep. And we would move on to the next part from there. Halogen atoms are deactivating groups and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? The sort of the flow. We'll get into a, the flow a little bit more. Each of those parts is worth five points once again. So just to clarify, mm -hmm. um, even during toss-ups, we can we have like ten seconds to discuss with the rest of our team. Yeah, if you buzz in, uh, you can discuss. Just keep in mind, ten seconds goes by pretty fast, so okay. be cool. ready. You. If you're gonna do it, be ready. Okay. Uh, one note about discussions that we forgot to mention. 
uh, all discussions have to be within your channels or over voice, and they cannot be in any back channel. Yeah, and don't do it in buzzing either, please, because that'll that just clogs it up. So try to do it in your own private, in your own chats, if possible. Okay. With that said, uh, let's begin. <laughs> Starting with the first toss up. This one. Wait, the bot went down. Um, yeah. Uh, I will reload the bot. All right. Never mind. Okay. We're going to start in like 30 seconds. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, you may type BZ or Buzz um, before, but as long as you don't send it, um, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. That should there work we go. now. Okay. Right. Are you ready? This first toss up, anyone can buzz. All right, let's go. Q switching allows this type of device to produce a much higher power output. DuPont manual. Laser, nice power. That was very quick. <laughs> Bonus for uh, DuPont manual. This is the first one. Okay, good. The more recent development of atomic theory and the structure of the atom relied heavily on quantum mechanics and associated wave functions. For five points each, state the name of the rule, theory, or scientist responsible for the concept. This principle states that there is a relationship between the uncertainties of their location and the momentum of an electron at any given time. It is, if written out in components, the x component is as follows. Uh, delta x, delta p of x uh, is greater than or equal to h, o, h, bar over, h over 4 pi. Excuse me. Time begins. 10 seconds. Uh, is that your final answer? Give me a yes, no. Final? Yeah. Yep, Heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle. <clears throat> nice. Uh, next. This relationship des uh, describes wave properties of an electron in terms of its position, mass, and energy. There are three components to this equation the Hamiltonian operator, the energy of the electron, and the wave function. Uh, I'm just going to assume that's final. Yep, Schrodinger equation is correct. And finally, <clears throat> okay, uh, next. Uh, the concept of shielding uh, involves electrons acting as a shield against nuclear charge. This rule takes the form Z sub F, uh, EFF, excuse me, or efficiency, uh, is equals to z minus s, where z sub f is the uh, effective nuclear charge, z is the actual nuclear charge, and s is the empirical shielding constant derived from orbital positions. I don't know why they didn't give me a pronunciation. <laughs> Time, please. No, sorry. Slater's rules is what we were looking for. All right. Uh, toss up. Where are we going here? Toss up back to anybody can answer. You ready? Let me just pre-read this. Okay. Uh, this biological structure is a disk di is a disk-shaped region whose name means movement place. The outer plate uh, is composed of proteins with anchoring sites, while the inner plate is composed of nucleosomes with a unique histone protein. This area controls the movement of chromosomes during uh, cellular cellular division. Uh, Dupont manual. Centrosome no. Uh, during cellular division. That is Yu Chen uh, Tesla. Well, no, sorry. Uh, and Troy. Kinetic core? Yeah, that's correct. Nice. Uh, that is not power. <clears throat> so for time. Okay. Uh, bonus for Troy. Ooh, okay. Bonus. Um, many Euclidean geometry problems can be solved with computation when a synthetic so solution is more difficult to find. For five points each, answer the following questions about so-called bash techniques. This coordinate system is named for a French mathematician and philosopher and often involves setting an origin and then algebraically solving for lengths and the position of points. Cartesian? What? Cartesian. Final answer, Cartesian. 
yeah, Cartesian coordinates. <clears throat> this set, while easily represented as Cartesian coordinates, is often much more useful for geometry using its polar form. This set is especially used in conjunction with the unit circle as it allows for elements of this set to be related to their conjugates as reciprocals. Complex numbers? I don't know. Go with yours. Co complex numbers, final answer. Yep, complex numbers is correct. Unlike complex numbers and Cartesian coordinates, these coordinates are defined in reference, reference to a simplex, where each point is assigned coordinates according to scalars depending on the vectors to each point of the simplex. In two dimensions, this coordinate system is defined with reference to a triangle. What? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to say Pythagorean. Final answer, Pythagorean. Uh, no, sorry. That is barycentric coordinates. <laughs> which, yeah. <laughs> I recommend you guys read about that. It's actually very cool. Anyway, <laughs> that's my bias, by the way. <laughs> then, all right, next. Uh, toss up for everybody. Description acceptable. This quantity was the subject of Claire Patterson and uh, George Tilton's work, postgraduate work, which directly led to the creation of clean rooms due to lead contamination in Patterson's zircon samples. An attempt to determine this quantity by Lord Kelvin was based on the... Uh, that is Tesla? Um, the age of the Earth? Yeah, age of the Earth. That's power. Nice. Sorry, which team was that? Tesla stem. <clears throat> Bonus for Tesla STEM. That was power. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they nagged before. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bonus. Uh, in computer science, implementing efficient algorithms is incredibly important in conserving comp computing resources. For five points each, answer the following questions about algorithms. This notation can be used to approximate the upper bound in time or space complexity of an algorithm in terms of its input size. Big O, right? Big O, yeah. yeah. Big, big O notation. notation. Yeah, big O notation is correct. This graph traversing algorithm is used to compute the shortest graphs on a weighted digraph. Unlike uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, this algorithm can handle negative cycles. In the algorithm, all edges are relaxed V minus one times. I have no idea. Um, yeah, about that, I don't know. <laughs> Nearest neighbor's algorithm directed. Uh, no. <laughs> Bellman Ford algorithm. Uh, is there a problem? Uh, no issue, just continue. Okay. Oh, that, okay. <laughs> Next. Uh, this type of subgraph is a graph uh, in a graph has exactly one less edge than it has vertices. Prim's algorithm and Crystal's algorithm are two algorithms that identify this type of subgraph. Is this Hamiltonian cycle? I don't know. Um, Yuchen, do you know? Uh, no. Maybe it's like a Cyclic graph. Okay, cyclic graph directed. Uh, no, sorry. A minimum spanning tree is the answer. So, all right. Uh, moving on to next toss up. <clears throat> okay. Uh, sorry. Give Give me one second. I am trying to fix a team. Oh. <laughs> um... Yeah, I can see that. Does that work? Yes, that works. All right. Minus one. Okay. Ready? Uh, you might want to reset it. Or I don't know. Up to you. Okay. <clears throat> Toss up. This first compound formed after the Big Bang has a strong dipole moment. This compound is the strongest known acid with an effective pKa of minus 63. Uh, Carmel. I think it's helium hydride. But... Okay. Final answer? Yeah. Uh, can you say it one more time, just for clarity? Helium hydride. Helium hydride is correct. Good job. That's Best. power. <clears throat> just need to be clear. Just want to be certain. Okay. Bonus. Ready? Okay. Uh, for caramel. Uh, enzymes are mechanical marvels, mediating all types of chemical reactions inside and outside the cell. For five points each, name the type of enzyme that each question describes. These enzymes are essential to the regulation of the cell cycle, ca uh, catalyzing the transfer of a phosphate from a donor molecule to a substrate. Kinase. Okay. Is there a final answer? Yes. Yes, kinase. <clears throat> Uh, this class of enzymes is classified as EC6 in the enzyme uh, commission system, consisting of enzymes like uh, synth 
synthetases, which form chemical bonds between two substrates. Uh, I don't know. Anna, do you know? Synthesis? Is it? I said synthesis. I guess we can go with synthesis, sure. Uh, sorry, ligase. <clears throat> okay. And finally, uh, these enzymes tend to utilize cofactors in order to transfer electrons from one molecule to another, forming electron transport chains. Cytochromes? No. Coenzymes? <clears throat> yeah, sure. What was it? Coenzymes. Coenzymes. Coenzymes? Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> um, yeah, oxy oxidoreductases. Yeah. Or oxido? Oxido? I don't think it's oxido. <laughs> As you can tell, this is not my field of strong suit. What are we doing next? Here. <clears throat> uh, we asked that bond, or we asked the competitors uh, be, not be on their mobile devices. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I can't see that. Sorry. I'm watching buzzing. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, um, I'm going to say in advance, pardon my French. Actual French, not swearing. Okay, one theorem by Goldreich, um, toss-up. One theorem by Goldreich, um, uh, Nikolai uh, Wigderson in 1987 states that if a, a T epsilon bit con commitment scheme exists for some statement, then there exists this in all languages in NP. One famous way to explain this cryptographic primitive is the Alibaba cave, a story written by Jean-Jacques uh, Kispator, Kispator, excuse me, uh, in the paper How to Explain These to Your Children. In this story, Peggy is trying to show that she knows a magic password to her friend, Victor, without revealing the magic password. For 10 points, name this cryptographic primitive, which is a method in which power, a prover proves to a verifier the truthness, a truthiness of a statement without revealing any additional information other than its correctness. Carmel? Truth detector. Uh, no. No neg. <clears throat> Hasla? Zero truth problem. Not quite, no. no. Uh, Troy? Private key encryption. No, sorry. That's dead. Zero knowledge proof is the term. Uh... <laughs> You guys made Alan sad. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> anyway. I'm only, only jokes. All right. Um I'm just marking I'm just marking the skip bonus, by the way. Next. Ooh. Okay. Ready? Toss up. If we can start. Okay. In higher mathematics, this word typically refers to a structure that is a ring where every non-zero element is a unit. In calculus and physics, one common operation that is performed along curves, the line integral, is performed within the vector variety of this word. The gravitational flavor of this word is a method of modeling gravity, charting gravitational... Uh, Tesla stone. Wait, Sammy, it's just field, right? Yeah, this field, yeah. Okay, yeah, field. Uh, yes, field is correct. Uh, not power. That's for 10. <clears throat> Uh, by the way, the final clue to that one is um, name the place where a football game is played. <laughs> if you were curious. What if they say football field? Well, <laughs> yeah. Is that an anti prompt? No. <laughs> no, it's like something, something like a grassy location. Anyway, I'm, good, I'm getting off track. <laughs> Moving on. Bonus for Tesla STEM. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Uh, experimentation is a common path by which many discoveries are made and theories are uh, confirmed in physics. For five points each, name these famous physics experiments. Or answer these questions about famous physics experiments, actually. That's my fault. <clears throat> this experiment, which successfully measured the elementary charge, was performed by uh, Millikan and Fletcher in 1909. Oil drop experiment? Yeah. Oil drop experiment directed. Yeah, oil drop. Good. 
The oil drop experiment was performed just 12 years after an experiment performed by this man, which discovered the negatively charged electron. J.J. Thompson. Final answer, yes. Directed. Yeah. Yep, J.J. Thompson. <clears throat> this subatomic particle's existence was confirmed in, in a 1956 experiment by Cohen and Raines using, by using the particularly high flux of these particles from nuclear reactors and observing the interactions between them and protons in water. Oh, um, I don't actually know. Them and protons in water? What would uh, interact with protons? I don't know. Like, Probably not neutrinos, right? Not neutrinos. Okay, I think that's time. No, it's electron neutrinos, actually. Uh, oh, <laughs> we should have discussed that. <laughs> good, good thought. Uh, well, wrong direction, sadly. Good job, though. Still two out of three. All right, moving on to next toss-up. Next toss-up. Um, computing a min-weight aborescence in linear time uh, in one of these data structures is an open problem, but Gabao uh, et al. has proven the existence of a, a linear rhythmic algorithm. The uh, Kosaraju uh, Sharir algorithm is a linear time algorithm to find the uh, strongly connected uh, components of this data structure. Another algorithm that works on this data structure include, uh, includes dis, uh, Excuse me, uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, but not the Prim algorithm. My fault, guys. Carmel. Um, are these trees, guys? Yeah, probably. Okay, trees. Uh, no, sorry. Nag. I want to see if there's any immediate buzzes. Tesla stem. Stacks. Really? I don't think so. But if you think. Stacks. I'll answer. Stacks. Stacks. No, sorry. <clears throat> For 10 points, uh, what is the name of this data structure, uh, which contains nodes and directional edges? Uh, Dupont manual. Is it like graph or I don't know? I need a final answer, guys. Sorry. Well, it was neither. Uh, digraph. Graph is not specific enough. Uh, that's a skip bonus for that. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Right here. Maybe the right spot. Okay, ready? Toss up. Uh, at the critical temperature in a superconductor, this quantity is the same between the superconducting and normal states. This quantity shares its name with the quantity uh, in information theory, which can be expressed as uh, in units of Shannon's. Uh, Tesla stem. Entropy. Yeah. Entropy, right? Yeah. yeah. Entropy Final. directed. Yes, entropy is correct. <clears throat> uh, that's power, barely. Last two words of power this time. Okay, over here. Okay. <clears throat> Compression algorithms are commonly used in signal oh. processing to reduce the computational resources needed to transmit data. For five points each, answer the following questions about data compression. These lossless optimal prefix-free codes were invented in 1951 by an, M an MIT student. Uh, priority queues and binary trees are used in its construction. What are these vectors? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like a Hamming code. Hamming final. code. Final. No, sorry. Huffman code is the answer. Okay. So, yeah. um, this compression technique uh, is used in conjunction with Huffman coding in many commonly used compression algorithms. This technique attempts to increase the number of sequences of repeating characters, which can then be passed to into move to front encoding for further processing. Wanna hand it? I don't know. Them? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Hamming code directed. Sorry, nope. Uh, Burroughs Wheeler transform is the answer to that one. And uh, finally, uh, this archival file type developed in 1989 implements compression algorithms to represent files or directories as a single file. This file type, which has a file signature that begins with the letters PK, also supports encryption. Oh, 
I have no idea. PK. Yeah, I don't know. P PKG dot PKG final. Uh, final. Final. Uh, yes. Sorry, no. Zip file is the answer. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't lose anything. Don't worry about it. Okay, moving on. Toss up. Ready? Or not yet. I'm gonna wait for that one. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, one type of sandbar with this shape develops as a result of rhythmic variability in its crestline depth. It's not longitudinal, but the the least stable type of channel bar uh, also comes in this shape. The side pro profile of a a, a phacolith may also be may be described as having this shape, although it may not hold true for every example. Another structure which possesses this general shape is the Barkin dune. Uh, most has less down. Um. Wait, do I actually know this? I was going to say parabolic, but I feel like it's wrong. So maybe transverse final. No, sorry. Oh. Most. Troy. Melinda, what were you going to say? Do you think it's like one of those tombolo things? Shoot. Not sure. No, I don't think that's a shape. Try help. Oh, crap. A shape? Uh, it's parabolic. Fine. Okay. Final answer parabolic. Wait, S Parabolic, not. Not. Oh. Uh, do you oh. want me to prompt on that? You go. Yes. Okay. Prompt. Yeah, prompt on that. Uh, what do we think? I don't know. Hyperbolic. Uh, sure. Oh. sure. Answer hyperbolic. Nope. Sorry. Uh, moving. Continuing. <clears throat> Wait. No. Is that three? No, that's two. Right. Yeah. Um. Most glacier glacial chatter marks like, also come in this shape. Point bars, uh, yeah, caramel. Uh, is this U shaped? Prompt. Do we want to try that? Oh, Prompt on U shape. Sorry, I thought that was that's my fault. Okay, okay. Uh, like semicircular. Do we want to try that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, can... Semicircular. Final. Uh, Hugo, this is your call. Uh, I'd say no on that. All right. Sorry. Uh, crescent is the actual is the shape. I think it's, yeah, I'm not an expert on this, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. This one. Two, right? Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, protest, sorry. Crescent isn't a well-defined shape. So, like, there's no specific mathematical definition for what constitutes a crescent shape. Hugo, this is on you. I don't. Um, I don't know if there's, a, don't it's... Know if there's like a standard way of. I mean, I don't know if I would mathematically define all of these necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, but the first clue, like all of the clues, are pretty much cluing something with crescent in its name. Until, like for, for for example, the first clue is um, crescentic sandbar. Second clue is uh, crescent bar. Um, so on and so forth. So. Um, I will mark this down. It may not be necessarily mathematical, but it's definitely the word that's used to describe those features. I'm gonna mark this down for right now. Uh, we'll come. I'll come back to it after the whole thing ends. All right, sounds good. Okay, just in case. So I want to keep this going. All right, uh, toss up. Okay. Um, in a triangle, the Torricelli point, or Torricelli point, is also named after this man, the point where the sum of the distances to the point from the triangle's vertices is minimal. A theorem in number theory named for this man posits a condition on which numbers can be Pythagorean primes. A differentiable function's extrema on an open set must appear on a stationary point. Carmel? Is this Vivani? I think. V Vivani final? Uh, no, sorry. That's not a bonus. <laughs> I'll wait. There we go. Um, a differentiable functions. Uh, where was I? Open set must appear on a stationary point, uh, according to a theorem named for this mathematician. This mathematician's last theorem was proven in 1995. 
du pas manuel. Fermat, yeah. Fermat's uh, sum of two squares theorem, in case anyone was wondering. Okay, uh, that's not power. Bonus. This one, I think. Yeah. For Dupont Mendel. Ready? Cool. Surprisingly, the field of ecology has a lot of rules. For five points each, answer, the que answer these questions about them. Foster's rule states that members of a species get larger or smaller based on resource availability. It was first used to demonstrate the reasons behind gigantism and dwarfism in these geographical places, such as New Zealand and the Galapagos. Island? Yep, islands. <laughs> Next. Um, bears, snowshoe hares, and over 90% of North American birds are followers of Gloger's rule, which um, uh, which states that within a species, uh, populations in more humid environments tend to have this trait more often than in arid environments. I don't actually know the guy's name. That's my fault. Coloration? Um, prompt. Can you be more specific? Pigmentation. Um, I'm going to prompt again. <laughs> Darker, yes. Darker pigmentation is what we wanted. So I needed a direction. Okay. Um, Long-eared owls have been shown to contrast this ecological rule, which was named after a German scientist because their populations tend to be larger in warmer regions. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will give it to uh, Bergman's rule, but yeah. Nice. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Where were we? There. Okay, this one. <laughs> Toss up. Okay. The acoustic effects of this type of reaction can be modeled using the Rayleigh criterion. Uh, this subject of a redox re reaction typically includes chemicals like fluorine, nitric acid, oxygen, or chlorine tri uh, tr trifluoride as reactants. The energy released by this form of reaction is used in cars to propel motion. Dupont manual. Combustion is correct. That's not power. Next bonus is that one. Oh, uh, wait, Caleb, you said power? Not power. Not power. Yeah. Okay. Next. Uh, bonus. Science is an ever grow is ever growing as new research is conducted, and mathematics is no exception. For five points each, answer the following questions about unsolved problems in mathematics. In 1900, this mathematician published 23 open problems, 10 of which were presented at the International Congress of Mathematicians in Paris. This mathematician also had a 24th problem that, in his notes, in involving proof theory, though he never published it. Bonus. Yeah. Riemann, no, sorry. Uh, Hilbert was the answer. <clears throat> David Hilbert. Next, Hilbert's eighth problem involves arguably the most famous unsolved problem in mathematics. This problem, a millennium problem put forward by the Clay Mathematics Institute, posits that all non-trivial zeros of the zeta function have a real part one half. This is DuPont still. Close enough, Riemann hypothesis is the more common name, but yeah. <clears throat> and next. What happened to the score? Oh, never mind. Uh, this other hypothesis has been verified for approximately the first 10 to the 20th positive integers. Uh, this problem, also known as, known as the 3n plus 1 problem, asks whether a pair of simple arithmetic operations will, after repeated iterations, always eventually transform positive integers to 1. Uh, 
I need an answer? <clears throat> Time, sorry. Sorry, a little too late. Colot's conjecture is correct, though. But sorry, out of time. <laughs> okay. Uh, next toss-up. My music stopped. There we go. That is correct. Okay, good. <clears throat> next toss-up. Uh, for everybody. Hope you're ready. Thank you. Okay. This family of proteins uh, serve as tr uh, signal transducting molecules within the cell, working with GPCR receptors. Troy? G proteins, right? Wait, is it G coupled or G? Go with yours. Okay, G proteins, final? Yep, that's correct. Power. <laughs> nice. Um, and that is this. Oops. <clears throat> All right, bonus. You ready? Glaciers and ice sheets are uh, excellent resources for helping reconstruct past climate conditions for five points each. This isotope of oxygen is the second most abundant in the world, although it only makes up around 0.2% of all oxygen atoms on Earth. The ratio of this isotope to most the most common isotope, oxygen-16, changes depending on the atmosphere, um, a difference which appears in glacial ice and assists in the reconstruction of ancient climate conditions. Discussion 18? 18, right? Oxygen yeah. 18. yeah. Final oxygen 18. Oxygen 18 is correct. Um, when this condition is achieved, a, a fern is uh, said to have formed uh, into bubbly glacial ice. At this density, which is approximately 830 kil kilograms per cubic meter, all pores in the fern are uh, sealed and air transport in and out of the ice ceases. It is commonly abbreviated as BCO. What? what was I it? don't remember this. <laughs> Any answer? Born complete oxygen. Uh, good guess, but no. Bubble close off density is the answer. Aww. And finally, um, the largest ice sheets in the world are found on this continent, with the eastern and western ice sheets of this continent being separated by a transcontinental mountain range. This continent is home to both the uh, Vostok and McMurdo stations, scientific research facilities for glaciers and cold environments. Antarctica. Antarctica, Antarctica final. Yeah, Antarctica. Right? Cool. We are halfway through, by the way, just to keep you give you a little sense of time. All right. Next toss up. Hope you're ready. Okay. Next toss up. <sighs> Description acceptable. This type of environment accounts for nearly half of the organic carbon stored within the soil. They cover a substantial portion of the northern hemisphere, around a quarter of the total land area, but are not restricted to land. Tesla stem. Uh. Maybe like wetland, maybe peat bog. I don't know. I'm just gonna go wetland. Wetland. Wetland final. No, sorry. Um, around a quarter of the total land area. Or I'm gonna wait for Buzz to show up. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Troy. Discussion. Is it tundra? What? Uh, Bella, you go oh. for it. Permafrost. Yeah, or final answer. Permafrost. Oh. Yeah, permafrost environment. Good job. That is power. Barely in time. Okay. Bonus for Troy. That's this one. <clears throat> Ready? Cool. Uh, when designing a website or program, it is important to be vigilant about vulnerabilities that can be used maliciously. For five points each, answer the following questions relating to cybersecurity. The true name of the little bobby tables is written to perform an injection in this language, which operates on databases. Oh, if only the school sanitized their inputs. SQL. SQL. Okay. Yeah, SQL. SQL final answer. Yeah, SQL is fine. Yep. Uh, this type of shell can be used to establish unintended connections to a target server. Distinctively, this, the target indicates a connection to the attacking machine. SSH? Go with yours. SSH, final? No. Reverse shell is the answer. 
Um, next, this three-letter program, partially funded by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, offers IDs to publish vulnerabilities, creating a database of program flaws available to the public. Oh, no. <laughs> um, DOS? I don't know. Final answer, DOS. Sorry, no, it is CVE. Hello. Was it like common Jason vulnerability or something? Phone. I don't actually remember the, the full name. <laughs> You can look it up later. Okay. Uh, next. Wait, one section. There we go. You're doing this one, yeah. <clears throat> next, uh, toss up. In French, th the name of this effect includes the names of two physicists who contributed to its discovery, one of whom was uh, Hippolyte Fizal. Uh, and the other of whom the effect is named after in English. Albert Einstein's 1905 paper on the electrodynamics of moving. Carmel? Is, is this photoelectric effect or uh, Brownian motion? I don't know. Hey, uh, photoelectric effect final? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, on the electrodynamics of moving bodies included uh, equations. That's academy. I think it's Doppler effect, guys. Okay, Doppler effect on okay. Yep, Doppler effect is correct. Nice. Uh, okay. Not power. Okay, for Academy, bonus. I think this is the right section. Okay. This one. Okay, protein folding is a dynamic process that involves many factors such as temperature, pH, and the identity of amino acids, as well as the nature of their R groups. For five points each, state the interaction name or number associated with, with the given question. This number refers to the number of residues per turn up or down the alpha helix. Assume a uniform helix and not a helix extension, such as the 3 sub 10 helix or pi helix. Uh, no Do buzz we now. know? Sorry? I don't know. Okay. Two. Two? No, sorry. 3.6 is the answer. Yeah. Oh, this is a bonus, so uh so no buzzing. Okay. Next. The inter th this interaction is the dominant covalent interaction between two specific R groups in protein tertiary structure. Um polar, maybe. Uh one more time? Dipole, final answer. Sorry, no, disulfide bond is our, is the correct answer. Uh, finally, <clears throat> this um, this diagram plots the phi or phi uh, torsion angle of a tr secondary structure against the psi torsion angle. In 1963, these three scientists invented this diagram to visualize the energetically allowed conformations of each um, amino acid in secondary structures. Three D space model. Final answer. No, sorry. Uh, Ramachand Ramachandran plots is our answer. Okay. Moving on to this one. Okay. A uh, toss up. This essential amino acid is a precursor to serotonin. It is only caramel. Okay. Tryptophan. Tryptophan final. Uh, one more time. Sorry. Tryptophan. Uh, yes. Nice. Good job. Good job. Power by one word. <laughs> Very quick power. <clears throat> uh. Here we go. All right, next. Since, uh, since Einstein's uh, proposal of general relativity, its predictions have been upheld by a wide variety of observations. For five points each, name these tests of general relativity. The GPS system of satellites, which uses synchronized clocks in its circulation of locations, must account for this general relativity effect, in which elapsed time between events varies depending on distance and from a gravitational mass. Redshift. It's gravitational, gravitational oh. time dilation, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That's a final yeah. answer? Yes. 
Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, gravitational time dilation. Okay, next. Uh, the precession of the orbit of this planet differed from the predictions of Newtonian gravity while agreeing with the predictions of general relativity, contributing to the initial adoption of general relativity. Mercury, right? Yeah, Mercury. Okay, Mercury final. Yep, Mercury is correct. Um, the first detection of gravitational waves involved this technique, in which light waves from a coherent source pass through a beam splitter uh, and along two different paths before being recombined at, at a detector with a phase difference, which is a diagnostic of differences between the paths. Is this interferometry? Oh, wait, oh. What did you I thought it was interferometry because they used LIGO for it, right? Yeah, okay, but it's oh. detecting gravitational waves. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, yeah, you can. Okay. Interferometry final? Uh, yes, you started saying that in time, so I'll give it to you. Nice. <clears throat> uh, did we get some disconnect? Are we okay? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the order and questions are randomized, so sorry. The only the only uh, thing that I guaranteed was that the toss and the bonus have different categories. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, sorry. Okay, next. Toss up. An ant on a square lattice that turns clockwise on white squares and counterclockwise on black squares is a specific type of this. Context-free grammars from another equivalence with the pushdown ver uh, with the pushdown version of this machine. Um, spaceships and oscillators, Tesla stem. Okay, given that it said machine, I'm guessing it's Turing machine. Go for it. Okay, Turing machine, final. Turing machine, no, sorry. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Are all patterns uh, in Conway's game, uh, I'll start from the beginning of that. Spaceships and oscillators are all patterns in Conway's game of life, which is an example of this type of machine. Uh, they are often studied as models of computation, with one particular version representing a finite state machine. Uh, this version has a deterministic and non-deterministic... Troy? Do you think it's Turing complete? What do you guys think? I don't know this. Final Turing complete. Uh, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Uh, has deterministic and non-deterministic properties, or, or types, sorry with equivalence in computational power. For 10 points, name this type of self-operating machine, which is designed to, um, to operate via a set of predetermined uh, instructions. It also titles a popular sequel in the Nier franchise of video games. Academy. Automata, right? Can you say that one more time? Yeah, I think so. Automata, one answer. Yeah, automata. <laughs> Nice. Uh, not power. That's for 10. Okay, bonus. Yeah, that's the right one. Okay. Bonus for uh, Academy. There are a few laws in thermodynamic and solution chemistry that deal with pressure, and particularly vapor pressure. For five points each, identify the name of the law or relation based on the description. This law relates the vapor pressure of a solution to the uh, to the product of the partial pressures of each solution's component in the in, and the vapor pressure of the pure component. The law predicts ideal solutions well. I don't remember. Um, I partial pressure law. Finally, law of partial pressure. Sorry, one more time. Law of partial pressure. No, uh, I don't believe so. I don't know. I don't. I forgot my terminology, but I don't believe so. I th I think they want the name anyway. They want it. They want the name anyway. Routes law. I believe it's actually related, at least. But we want the name. Sorry. <clears throat> Good observation. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um. This law states that the total amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is proportional to the partial or vapor pressure above the liquid. The proportionality constant is unique for every gas. Do we know the name? I don't know the names. I don't know the names, bro. It's like the Coke can, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's that one, um, that one. Oh, sorry, time. Time. Uh, yeah, sorry, time off. <clears throat> that would be Henry's Law. 
Next. Um, okay. This relation specifies the temperature dependence on vapor pressure. Uh, variables used in this relation include pressure, temperature, and the enthalpy of vaporization. This equation uh, follows the structure of the Arrhenius equation. Did I even do that? Do we know? No. Okay, Boyle's law. Final answer. No, sorry. Boyle's law, no. Uh, Clausius uh, Clapeyron, Klape I think. Clapeyron. Question number check. Uh, we are <clears throat> 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 out of 24. Two thirds. Uh, we're about to start 17. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Are we all ready? Uh, for the next toss up. Just this one. Okay, ready? Cool. The measure kind of this word specifies a set, a sigma algebra, and a measure on the set that is countably add additive. The metric flavor of this word defines a function over ordered pairs of points in a set, which assigns a distance between any two points in the set. In linear algebra, the vector variety of this word uh, approximately specifies a set of vectors, which can be added or scaled by constants. The outer kind of this word refers to the expanse, uh, car Carmel. Wait, um, guys, is this like a product or a space? It's a space, isn't it? Yeah, space. Okay, space final? Yep, space is correct. Okay, cool. That, nice. that, that, that hint was uh, quite literally referring to um, outer space, by the way. <laughs> nice. If you, in case you're curious. Okay, uh, not power. <clears throat> Bonus for Carmel. What three, yeah. Okay, um, modeling surface temperatures of the Earth is an extremely difficult task due to multiple factors interplaying with one another, for five points each. Changes in the paleoclimate data support the, this model of average solar insulation that is cyclical over long time spans and is dependent on changes to the Earth's tilt and orbit. These movements are collectively named after a Serbian geophysicist who hypothesized them in the 1920s. Milankovic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Milankovic mm -hmm. final. Uh, yeah, Milankovitch. Okay. Yeah, Milankovitch. <clears throat> Cycles, that is. Okay, next. Uh, this, this effect is caused by urbanization and change in land that land use that affects how solar uh, insulation is absorbed and re-radiated, as well as changing atmospheric dynamics in the region. The integration of green spaces and more reflective surfaces in cities may help combat this effect, which is usually localized to highly urbanized areas. Urban the island effect. No, it's urban. Oh, yeah, okay. Island effect. Okay. Final answer. Yeah. One more time. Urban heat island effect. Final answer. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't nice. hear the middle there, so I was a little concerned. But that's correct. Next, uh, a high NDVI value that indicates healthy vegetation is present and that the spectrum peaks is in this wavelength. Peaks in this wavelength. Excuse me. High NDV value. In the spectrum. Uh. Is it mean like, wavelengths or what? Is it it's like no. maybe it's just like infrared if it's heat? I don't know. I, I have no like, idea. Snowball. Infrared final. Uh, Actually, was that time up? I wasn't paying. I didn't see it. Yeah, I think it was time up. Sorry. That was much longer. Sorry, that was than time 10 up. Seconds. Yeah, around infrared. Is so. Near uh, infrared. I, I said infrared final right before you guys called time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based on when the, the bot says so. Which I believe was earlier. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Close though. And also the bot is the bot uh times eleven seconds, not ten seconds. So if That's it's close, true. um we, we do have a buffer of, of of one second. Yeah. If you start the answer but anyway, anyway. Uh next. This one. Uh where'd it go? Here. All right, next. This class of chemical reagents uh, has a variety of uses in redox organic chemistry. This reagent is uh, generally prepared with uh, halide, halides. Uh, sorry, Troy. Wait, is it leaving? Oh, That's well, scale, we I don't know. Final answer, leaving. No, sorry. Uh, Carmel. 
Is it Gringard? Yeah, Green, I, Green, sure, um, we can try. Greenyard? Greenyard, um, yeah. Uh, yes, actually. Nice. Good nice. Buzz. Uh, that's power. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, bonus for Carmel is this one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, imagine you are captured along with one of your teammates with no way of communicating with one another. For five points each. This classic thought experiment employs the situation just mentioned, providing the option for each person to betray the other in hopes of reducing their sentence. Prisoner's Dilemma? Prisoner's Dilemma. Prisoner's Dilemma. Yeah, final. Yep, yeah, Prisoner's Dilemma. The Prisoner's Dilemma is a common example of this concept in game theory, where each player has no incentive to change their strategy. Ash Equilibrium? Probably not. Yeah. Okay, yeah, final. Uh, yes, Nash Equilibrium. Okay. Um, in games with more than two players, this variation of Nash Equilibrium specifies that not only each player has no incentive to change their strategy, but every coalition of players also cannot change their strategy in a way that benefits all members of that coalition. No idea. Like, should we go with, like, coercive Nash Equilibrium or something? Or, like, group-wide? I don't know. Collective, maybe? I don't know. Sure. Okay, collective, final. Uh, no, sorry. Strong Nash Equilibrium is, okay. is the answer. All right, we are on the final six. Plus skip bonuses, plus uh, the final question. So I hope you're all ready. First toss-up of the final six, <clears throat> which is this one. Okay. Wait. What is that? Oh, never mind. Okay. Um, um before Yes. Uh so can our team member join now? Uh yeah. That's fine, I guess. We'll pause for okay. one minute really quick. <clears throat> Uh, don't worry about forgetting bonus. It's totally fine. Hi. Uh, so camera on, one hand in frame when questions are being read. That's the only thing that's required. <clears throat> uh, and change your uh, nickname to... Um, yeah, you yeah. already changed it. All right. Thank you. And... Okay. Um, <clears throat> are we all ready? Uh, please mute during while reading, while the question is being read, by the way. Oh. <laughs> yeah, please mute while the question is being read. Okay, are we ready? I actually can't see everybody. Hopefully we're all ready. <clears throat> okay. This emission is the main signal uh, the Jane's... James Weber telescope is looking for, or Weber, I guess, uh, is looking for in order to study the first... Uh, Dupont Manual. Cosmic back. Oh, uh, what's your final answer? Which one's final? I just need which one, because I think it, I heard two things. Okay, well, no, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, to study the first galaxies caused by uh, atomic electron Tesla stone. Uh, go. X ray. No, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that would be Bronx. Infrared. No. We were looking for Lyman Alpha. Okay, uh, this is an escape bonus. Whoops. Probably, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, next toss up. Also, I apologize if you hear my fan. <laughs> okay, next toss up. 
While this equation de uh, describes a concept frequently used in graph theory, it is also useful when describing ecological networks. It is mainly used to understand interactions of, between different species and can be helpful when characterizing the structure of food webs. For 10 points, <clears throat> uh, Carmel. Uh, I'm pretty sure this, these are the Lotka yeah. Volterra equation. Yeah, yeah. Final? Uh, not what we're looking for, though. I don't actually know what that is, so you might want to check. <laughs> okay. So, apologies. You can let me know after. <laughs> okay. Uh, and can be helpful when characterizing the structure... Oh. Start buzz. Yeah. It can be helpful when characterizing the structure of food webs. For 10 points, name this essential ecological equation for measuring the possible number of links between species. Uh, Troy. I don't know. Shannon index is not right. I can't think. I'm blanking really hard right now. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. No, Shannon no index. Uh, Final. No. No Nagra. Uh, Academy. Measures dollar food chain. Okay. Uh, can you food speak up a little bit? Link. Food chain fine links. Uh, no, sorry. Connectance equation is the name. Can we protest? Yeah, I'd, uh, can we get that checked? Somebody? Uh, Caleb, which question, was that? Hmm? Oh. which question was that? Uh, this is Bio 4. Bio 4 and, um, what was your answer? Lotka Volterra. Uh, can you spell that for me? Yeah. Thank you. I'll type it in chat. Lotka Volterra equations models predator prey dynamics, and that's using the two population sizes, which is different from the number oh, of. Oh, yeah, links. this is different. Never mind. Okay. Actually, just, just on a quick glance, this looks different. Because okay. it's, it's definitely not for graph. It definitely doesn't do graphs. It's definitely not a graph equation. Yeah, I guess it's just based off of like the clue that specifically mentions food webs. Because yeah, before yeah. you mentioned like graphs and you mentioned yeah. um, ecological dynamics. Yeah, this is not. It's, I don't uh, I've conferred with others that it is not. Equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Good try though. Uh, and that means this bonus. Ooh. Okay. All right, uh, moving on to the next toss up, which is this one. I think I know what this is. Oh, okay, never mind. <clears throat> Ready? Okay. In a group, this word describes the period of the element of the group operation applied to itself. For a differential equation, this term is the equal to the highest number derivative that appears. In a square matrix, this number. Troy. Things order. Right. Oh, I thought degree. Go with yours. Go with yours. Order, final? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Nice. Uh, is that power? Oh, that's power, yeah. Okay. Uh, bonus. <laughs> oh, this one. Okay. We are ready. Uh, cryptography has been studied since ancient times to, prevent, to protect sensitive information. For five points each, answer the following questions about cryptography. This classical cipher, generalized, can be thought of as addition in an algebraic group. The cardinality of this Caesar's... Uh, this... I just said it. Sorry. I'm throwing that out. Wow. Didn't wait, expect that we, to happen. Wait, will we get an alternate bonus? Uh, Alan, if you can... I can write a can, question right if now. If you can speedrun yeah. that, I will, I will be incredibly impressed and also thankful. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's completely my fault, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will do. I'll read the other two, um, and we'll we'll see what to do from there. <laughs> Apologies. It's okay. It happens. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Have fun. Pick something. Okay. Moving on. The R in RSA. This man is known for his numeric, his numerous cryptographic discoveries, such as the RC class of block ciphers and the MD hash functions. Is Rivis? Rivis I, think I don't know. Like that. No. Um, Rivis final. Oh uh, yeah, that's correct. Nice. Thank you, team. <laughs> uh, I rewrote the uh, the first question. <laughs> oh come on, guys! <laughs> oh no! Do you really want me to do that? 
Or are you gonna? <laughs> or are you gonna? Or do you want me to wait? Do you, would you rather me wait? I'll I'll give you time, and I'll read it at the very end. We can we can ask them. Uh, would you guys take a, a ten point last question? Sure. Okay. Would you like that, or that. would you do you want them to like try to rewrite a question? Um. Wait. No. Huh? Wait, try, please rewrite. Rewrite. <laughs> okay. Seriously, um, Tim. <laughs> can I give that to you? Can, can I give you until the end of the the whole thing? Yeah. Sure. And we'll do this at the very end, just yeah. to give them a little okay, bit of time to thanks. polish it. Okay, thank you. So, you know, get creative. Okay. In the 1996 uh, Eurocrypt cryptography conference, Coppersmith famously showed that finding small roots of bivariate integer polynomial equations is easy using this algorithm. Coppersmith's namesake method, which uh, implements the, this algorithm, is used as a basis for Coppersmith's attack, which can be used in partial key exposure attacks on RSA. Euclidean? I don't know. Yeah. Euclidean, final answer. Uh, no. That would be LLL. Uh, Caleb, um, I'm requesting for you to, to, to uh, say the entire name of the, the algorithm. Okay, fine. Uh, Leinster, Leinster, <laughs> wait, is that actually t it's two of the same name? I didn't actually know that. Yeah, it is. Okay. I don't think they're related. Leinster, Leinster, Lo uh, Lovas. <laughs> yeah, Lovas. <clears throat> Assuming accents actually mean accents. <laughs> okay. With that debacle out of the way, uh, I will. I'll do the the buzzer stuff. I'll, I'll write. Cool. All right. Or do you have? Do we need perms? Or is the bot just dead? Uh, Alan, I believe the bot is down right now. Yes, the uh -oh. bot is dead. Um, uh oh. Doesn't like crypto moments. for some reason. Okay. Um. Give it one second. Sometimes that happens. I think it is back up. Okay, it nice. is back up. Sorry okay. about that. Uh, I'll take over for, for that portion. Okay. Uh, toss up. Combinatorial problems solvable with this approach are a superset of combinatorial problems solvable with algorithms exploiting the Matroid property. The zero slash the zero one knapsack problem can be solved in pseudo polynomial time using an algorithm incorporating this method. This technique is famously used in elementary implementations of Fibonacci number and factorial computations. For ten points, Dupont Manual. Recursion is not correct. Uh, for 10 points, uh, what is the name of this programming technique which optimizes recursion? I forgot to do this. Yeah, just buzz, sorry. Uh, I'm going to give that to Carmel because that's my fault. <laughs> uh, I think it's divide and conquer. Okay, let's go with that. Divide and conquer final? Uh, no, sorry. Okay, let me actually do this first though. Okay. Uh, which optimizes... Uh, what is the name of this programming technique which optimizes recursion with uh, memoization? Try. Melinda, any thoughts? <clears throat> I'm going to say heuristic. Final heuristic. Yeah. Wait. No, sorry. Uh, no nag for that. Uh, it is dynamic programming. Um, Wait, protest. Um, oh, sorry. I thought we got a neg. Yeah, no neg. You can only there protest for an incorrectly uh, marked uh, wrong answers. Or, you know, it's okay. Just let us know if something's wrong. But yeah. Anyway. Wait, uh, just a, just yes. a question. But when we buzzed, we thought the question was over. Um, I don't know how you can um, solve that, I guess. But well, I can't. I can't really help you there because the question just isn't over. <laughs> yeah. So. If there's more to read, even though, like, if I have a natural pause in my cadence, that doesn't mean the question's over, sadly. Uh, that is this bonus. That's the wrong color. Wait, for, um, for these questions, should, are next minus three, or are they minus five? Minus five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, toss-up. Last two toss-ups. Uh, and Alan, let me know when you're ready. Well, I'll do it. Uh, I'm ready. Yeah, okay. I finished rewriting. Okay, I'll do it at the. I'll do it at the end anyway, though, just for consistency. I can't find this question for some reason. Okay, here we go. 
Let's go. Uh, toss up. The presence of a weak, uh, the presence of a weak magnetic field around this large moon indicates that it might uh, might produce possess a layer of salty liquid water below the surface that supports a magnetic field. Uh, that is Troy. Is it Europa? Europa. I think it's Europa. Final Europa. No, sorry. Uh, a layer of salty li- uh caramel, I think. You're gonna go with Titan or Io? It's not Io, it's probably Titan. Okay, Titan final. Uh, no, sorry. <clears throat> Finally, uh, Tesla Stone. I think it's Ganymede. <laughs> so, yeah, Ganymede. Uh, final. no. Callisto is the answer. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let me mark the the miss bonus. Have some fun with this later. Okay. Uh, and final main toss up. Okay. Uh, a, pol- uh, a polarimeter study of this uh, class of molecules will yield an observation of opti- optically inactive compounds, despite the presence of Tazelstam. Racemic mixture? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, despite the presence. Okay. Carl? Miso compounds? Yes, that's correct. Sure. Nice. End of power, too. Good job. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that, and we have bonus for this one. Okay. Ready? For Carl? Okay. Ecological succession describes the change of the species structure of an ecological community over time. For five points each, answer the following questions regarding succession. Um, this term refers to organisms choosing to have many offspring, but not to invest significant parenting resources in such in each, a strategy common among pioneer species in previously uninhabited environments. Uh, mass. I don't know. It's not founder. Mass I don't know. Or actually, it might be founder. I don't think I'll it's founder effect, though. Founder effect final? Uh, no, sorry. Our strategist. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, this, this term refers to plants which grow directly in or on rocks, forming one example of the first step of primary succession on cool lava flows. That's I like mosses. This, but I don't know. I have no clue. Uh, like pioneer mosses, I don't know, or just mosses. Mosses final? Uh, no, sorry. Lithophyte. Okay. A little, bit. A little more technical. Okay. Finally, uh, this letter designates an organic matter horizon uh, in a soil profile, which may come to cover the underlying volcanic bedrock throughout the process of succession. Um, is it just O? Okay, yeah. Sure. Uh, o final? Yeah. Yeah, final. Yeah. Uh, yes, O is correct. Nice. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're going we're gonna to do the new toss-up for, or the new bonus for Troy. So, best of luck. Hope you're ready. You guys, uh, give yeah. me a little, yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, re- remember, this is about cryptography. Okay. This square is used in ciphers such as the Playfair cipher, the ADFGVX cipher, and the tr- uh, Trifid cipher. You're blocking the, your cursor is blocking it. <laughs> yeah. And the Trifid cipher. There we go. Oh, is it then? Uh, Polybius square, I think. Okay, go. Uh, Polybius final. Oh uh, yeah, that's correct. Good job. That's five for you. <clears throat> okay. We are now going to go through. Um, we have two things left. One, missed bonuses. So you have a few questions that, or you have a few bonus questions that we never got to. So we're going to go through them now. Uh, remember that bonuses have an easy, medium, and hard part. So easy will be worth one, medium will be worth two, uh, hard will be worth three. If you get any of these wrong, buzz in and get them wrong at any point. There, you lose three points, uh, and they are 
uh, and they will be done like toss-ups, like one-line toss-ups. So be ready with your buzzers, okay? We're going to go kind of fast, so good luck. Um, please Also, please don't buzz in during the, the lead-in portion, which I will, I will mention uh, in a sec. Which uh, I'll I'll tell you when the question actually starts. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The oxidize the ox pfft, Jesus the oxidation of the alcohol function group into carbonyls may prove to be very useful in experimental organic chemistry. For five points each, identify the name of each oxidation react. Uh, oxidation reaction associated with the following sets of reactants. Assume the starting molecule is a secondary alcohol and the ending molecule is a ketone. Okay, here's where the question actually begins. The reactants of this reaction are uh, uh, oxyl chloride, DMSO, and uh, ET ET3N. Tazelstan. Uh, uh, Swarin oxidation. Swarin oxidation is correct. That's one. <clears throat> Uh, and for the next one, anyone can still answer. The react this reaction's uh, reactants are uh, CrO3, H2SO4, and acetone. Tesla stem again. John's oxidation. Yep. Uh, that's uh, that's two. And finally, uh, is that written correctly or is that well? Okay, I'm just I'm gonna assume. Uh, next, this reaction uh, utilizes. Uh, AL OIPR uh, 3 and heat. Uh, Bronx. No? Okay. No, no nag, though. Wait, can I ask a question real quick? Um, sure. If no so one if you. If you answer, oh, sorry, I didn't realize the question was over. Yeah, well, we're out of time by now, so yeah, go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. Um, if you buzz in after the question is finished and you get it wrong, is that still a neg? Uh, buzz. If you buzz in, don't answer. That's counted as uh, you can't rebuzz, but you don't get anything. Uh, but you also or... you don't, but you don't lose anything. It's just a zero. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, sorry. Um, if you get it wrong but you don't interrupt, is that still an egg? Oh, uh, yeah, wrong but no interrupt is is not an egg. Sorry. Not an egg. Thank yeah, you. I don't know if I misheard. My bad. Okay. How many bonuses are left? Uh, one. I think around five. I don't remember. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I have some opportunities. Okay. Uh, I'm also going just in order, so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, next. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So this is the lead-in, don't buzz in this part. Knowledge and expertise in lab techniques are imperative for new chemistry discoveries. For five points each, identify the lab technique associated with each description. All right, here's where the question starts. This technique involves the slow addition of a solution uh, with a known, and that is a category. Titration, right? It's citation, titration, right? Okay, uh, final answer, titration. yes. Titration. Titration is, yeah, titration is correct, nice. Oh, uh, that's one. <clears throat> Next, uh, this technique is often used by organic chemists to determine the structure of a compound. <clears throat> Tesla stem. Um, probably NMR. NMR, yeah, NMR. Stem. <laughs> I mean, you can't tell, but like, okay, NMR. Uh, can you be slightly more specific? Nuclear magnetic, Nuclear magnetic resonance. resonance spectroscopy. Um, I think I just give it to you. <clears throat> Proton NMR is to be more specific. <clears throat> Wait, isn't that a never mind? Yeah. Or H N uh, H1 NMR. Okay. Once again, I I don't have specification on this, so if someone wants to check that, whether I was supposed to prompt or just accept it, that would help. Okay, next. Uh, actually, do we need a uh, pause for 10 seconds? Okay, we're going to pause for a little bit.
really quickly. <laughs> Sorry. Go quick. Oh, that's three. Sorry, if that wasn't clear. Um, <clears throat> we should also mention that at the end of all of the missed bonuses, there is going to be one, I guess, final toss up. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll have one with, last toss -up. without a bonus. Yeah, which is kind of for fun. OK, just let us know whenever you're ready. <clears throat> How many points is the last one worth? Same. Same as a normal toss. Or 10. Right. So, yeah. And sorry, is there a bonus after that one as well? Or just no, a toss? No. no bonus. No bonus. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hopefully. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do the next part then. Ready? Okay. This technique is used to determine the molar mass as well as or wait, can someone start buzz? Okay. Uh, I'll start. Thank you. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> okay, um, Carmel. This is mass spec, right? Yeah, mass spec. Okay, mass spec final. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> 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 that was exciting. To say the least. Oh, uh, that's two. Okay. All right. Next. Um. All right. Don't buzz on this yet. Diffraction of beams of particles is an important tool in the study of crystals. For five points each, name the term associated with diffraction crystallography. Now you can buzz in. This form of penetrating radiation. Dupont Manual. No. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Tesla stem. It's just X ray, right? X ray, yeah. Go. Now it's X ray. Yes. Final. X ray is correct. That's two. All right, next. Uh, this law, this law which relates to Tesla stem. Okay, there's only one important law. That's a lie, but it's probably Bragg's law. Yeah, Bragg's law. Final. Final answer? Yes, Bragg's Law is correct. <laughs> That's three. Uh, and finally, uh, this form of interference between reflected waves, Tesla stem. Oh, it's either constructive or destructive. Let's so, go destructive. destructive. Oh, no, 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 I like constructive. OK, fine. OK, constructive, fine. All right, That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh this one. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't know what to say except I'm just very impressed by that. Okay, anyway. <laughs> by the anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh here we go. Uh this is Leiden. Uh the standard model of particle physics is one of the best tested theories of basic building blocks of the universe that we have for five points each. What type of part uh this is buzz. Buzz you can start buzzing here. What type of particle considered to be both a fermion and a, a hadron? Tesla stem. Both a fermion both. and a hadron? Wait, both. Uh, uh, what's it called? Like, what? Uh, oh, shoot, that's time. Sorry. Um, reset. Carmel. It's boson, right? Mm, I don't think so. I thought it was lepton, but OK. Uh, Lepton. Should we uh, go lepton? Yeah, lepton. Lepton final. Uh, no, sorry. <sighs> My bad. Did we get. Is that correct or no? Is it Bronx? Alan? Yes, it, it okay. is Bronx. Bronx. Yes, it is. Gluon? No, we are looking for Baryon. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, next. This quantity is conserved in all interactions except for weak nuclear interactions and may uh, only change by a value of one. Tesla stem. Uh, this is a lepton number, right? Lepton numbers, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Maybe. Yeah, OK. Lepton number. Oh, we know baryon number. Final. Baryon number? Is that the final answer? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> oh. All right. Moving forward. Carl. Um, left hand number. No, I don't, I don't believe so. <laughs> Next. Are we are we buzzing or no? Weak nuclear interactions uh, and may only change by a value of one during interactions governed by the weak interaction. Uh, it is named with a quark responsible for this quantity, first postulated by Gelman, uh, Nakano, and Nishijima in 1953. There might be alternate names, and I will check that. Anybody? What do you guys think it's top? Sure. Top, maybe? What do you guys think? Top. Final. Uh, no. Okay, I'm going to verify this because I just, I'm just i guessing that there's probably alternate names and I want to be very safe. I don't think it is, though. Yeah. Strangeness is what we're looking for. Oh, we can confirm uh, yeah, that no baryon numbers and lepton numbers are different quantum numbers. Yeah, they are different. Oh, um, no penalty. Oops, one second. No penalty for Troy, yeah. Uh, add five, add three. three. Okay. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Uh, yes, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Uh, finally, if someone starts question. Oh, I'll start it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, these proposed types of particles refer to right-handed neutrinos that, due to their uh, chirality, cannot interact with the universe except for gravity. Tesla stem. Uh, they're called like ghost neutrinos, right? Ghost neutrinos. Is right. that the yeah. name? It's like some okay, ghost neutrino. Ghost neutrino. Why not? Uh, no, sorry. What? Uh, wait. I'm going to double check that. I don't think so. Uh, in the meantime, can we continue with? Yeah. Let me. Uh, I will start the. Um, they. Okay. Isn't it graviton? Yeah, that's the. Okay. Graviton uh, panel. Uh, no, sorry. <clears throat> Can we challenge that? Because uh, we'll check it after, right after, yeah. just in case. Bronx. Yeah, sterile neut neutrino. This is what we're looking for. <clears throat> is that hard three points? Uh, that is three. Yeah. Uh, give us one moment as we check. Um, yeah, if someone wants to actually be safe, be sure about that. That would. Be uh, we're checking right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't think, but whatever. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, I'll I'll do this part, I guess. Um, uh, we confirmed that we will not get the points. Okay. Yeah. Also, I didn't get to the end of the question for that, right? No. Okay. Uh, this is lead-in, so don't buzz yet. One of the most common ways to analyze rocks and minerals in a lab setting is through the use of petrographic microscopy. Uh, for five points each. Now I can buzz. This characteristic of a mineral requires an observation under both plane polarized light and cross polarized light under PP. Uh, Tesla stem. Oh, shoot. I think it's like anisotropy. Okay. Yeah. Final. What was it again? Anisotropy. Uh, no, sorry. <clears throat> under PPL. Uh, Carmel. All right, Raga, what is it? Uh, probably like double refraction, right? Okay. Double refraction? Is that it? Is that what you said? I know. Uh, no. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> and yeah, Troy. Wait, do you guys want to just say like birefringent? Wait, Wait Melinda, you're cutting out. Do you guys want to just say like birefringent or something? Can you? Time also. Okay. Um. Our time. Uh, sorry, time is up. Our French is not correct. Time, regardless. Uh, yeah. You were kind of in the right direction, uh, Yuchen. Uh, what's the accent on this, actually? Before I say this out loud, Hugo. It's isotropy. There we go. I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, no, the, the question was not over. I was like, I was waiting for that to show up. Okay. Uh, next. 
Um, I'm starting it. <laughs> By definition, uh, isotropic minerals uh, do not have this optical property, while anisotropic minerals do. When a mineral's crystalline uh, tesla stem. I think this is like pleochroism. Okay. Pleochroism final? Uh, no. Um, did you start it? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, Hugo can check that for me. Uh, while, uh, when a mi mineral's crystalline structure causes its index of refraction to change depending on the direction of incoming polarized light, it is said to have this property. Carmel. This is double refraction, right? Okay. Double refraction? Yeah. Uh, answer prompt? You, you can be a little more general. Just refraction. Just refraction. Okay. All right, refraction final. Uh, no. One more? Uh, that's the end. Yeah. Yeah, that was the end. <laughs> no? Okay. That's no, biofringence. <laughs> that was biofringence. So, yeah. Okay, moving on to this one. This mineral is clear under PPL, but undergoes wavy extinction when rotated under XPL. This mineral is notable for having no distinct cleavage pattern, as well as coming in many different colors. Tesla stem. Quartz, probably. Quartz. Final answer? Yeah. Yes, quartz is correct. <clears throat> okay. I think we have we have a little bit more. <clears throat> Next. This is Leiden. Uh, to measure astronomical distances, astronomers often use various different sources, from parallax to redshift, to corroborate distances for five points each. Uh, question begins here. This type of event is hypothesized to originate from a Tesla stem. Probably like type 1A supernova. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay, type 1A supernova. Final? Uh, yes, that's correct. One. <clears throat> Next. Uh, light from quasars is often pff, light from quasars often travel through uh, great distances with various levels of extinction along the way. This absorption at uh, the ab this absorption at various redshift values uh, creates multi multiples of certain absorption lines, especially the Lyman lines and of, of neutral hydrogen. This creates what feature in the spectra of quasars? Tesla stem. I think it's called the Lyman alpha forest. Lyman alpha forest. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Lyman alpha forest. <laughs> Uh, no, sorry. Oh, wait. Don't spoil. Okay. This creates uh, caramel. I no, DuPont manual. Reach off a line. No, sorry. Alan. And Bronx. Spectral. No. This is the. <clears throat> Also, there's another sentence to this. Uh, this is the Gun Peterson trough. Yeah. Okay. Finally, uh, for this set, <clears throat> Alan. Thank you. Okay. What relation describes an empirical power law relating the stellar Tesla stem? Uh, probably the Tully Fisher relation. Go for it. Tully Fisher relation final? Uh, no. Oh. Once again, check alternates, but I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, what relation describes an empirical power loss uh, relating the stellar velocity dispersion of an elliptical gal galaxy to its absolute magnitude? Uh, yeah, Dupont manual. Yeah, that's correct. Please wait till I actually recognize you, though. And that's two. Uh, we have one more. Good luck. This is Leiden. For five points each, answer the following questions about integrals. 
Uh, this is where the question begins. This type of uh, integral is defined for complex functions and is performed over curves which share its, their name with the kind of integral. How's this done? Contour integral. Final? Yes. Yes, contour integral is correct. <clears throat> That's three. Uh, in, in vector calculus, this theorem relates the surface integral of a, uh, an oriented surface to the line integral uh, of the boundary curve on the, along the surface of the curl. Uh, Dupont manual. Green's theorem is not correct. But that was... Sorry. No neg. Yeah, no neg. Tim, I believe. Troy. S Stokes theorem. Yeah, Stokes theorem. I know. Stokes theorem is correct. That's two. <clears throat> and finally, uh, roughly speaking, okay, roughly speaking, this type of integral is the limit of the approximation of the area under a curve using rectangles as the width of those rectangles. Tesselstam? Definite integral? Wait, uh, sure. Raymond, actually, Raymond integral. No, 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 just go definite. Definite integral, final, fine. Uh, no, sorry. And Carmel. Isn't this just Raymond sums? Yeah. Final okay. answer? Raymond sum final? Uh, yeah, you got the keyword, Raymond integral. Nice. Okay. Which is the limit of a Raymond sum. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> okay. Finally, the final toss up. It's actually very close right now. Oh, that's plus one. Yeah. Yes. Um, before before we go into the final toss, up, if there is a tie, we will break ties using the written exam score. Yeah, I think that's oh, that is technically possible. Yeah. Um, and since you guys don't know what the written exam scores is, um, do we do we tell them? No. Actually, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. No. Okay. Good luck. This is the final toss up. You know, scoring like a regular toss up. Ready. Okay. This event was created by a biology major in the 2020 Science Olympiad season, who has since done research on the development of genetically encoded fluorescent sensors. In the selfish gene, Richard Dawkins invented the term... Troy? Lean, mean, mean machine. <laughs> yes, that is correct, and that's power. <laughs> Lean, mean, mean machine is the answer. Ooh. Troy clinches it out last second. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the clue includes, during the 2022 Las Vegas Invitational's iteration of this event, the person reading the question performed bone trusel from Undertale as part of the identification uh, section. That Las Vegas uh, exam was mentioned in the MIT o Invitational Awards Ceremony as uh, for this event. For 10 points, name this fun Science Olympiad trial event all about memetics. All right, and that's it. <laughs> uh, we are going to do a couple checks on a few questions. Um, actually, did we resolve everything? Um, I believe so, actually. OK, never mind. This is. Uh, please note that these scores are preliminary and are subject to change um, before the award ceremony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Overall, uh, good job to all of you. This is, I mean, all of you made it to top six. So that's, that's an accomplishment already. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Yes? How many like teams were there besides like the top six? Like I like the uh, top six out of how many? Um, you will we shouldn't say one. that. Yeah, you will find out when results are released. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you it's more than six. <laughs> okay. So congratulations to Troy. So final score, at least for now, Troy, I guess, score as of now. Troy 79, Carmel 66, Dupont Manual 49, uh, Academy 21, Tesla STEM 8, and Bronx Science negative 8. <clears throat> Good job to all of you for, once again, for making it this far. Uh, and yeah, anything, if you have anything you want to say to me, let me know. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you all for being here and for participating. This was super fun. My voice is very tired, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell already. So yeah. Uh, oh, will you guys release the question packets at the end? That's part of the overall test release. So okay, cool. If we're if we're releasing it, it'll be in the it'll be there. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. Uh, anything else? You want to let me know?
per se. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to give my voice a break uh, in that case. So thank you all for being here one more time, uh, and I hope to see you guys soon. And yeah, thank you again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Oh my god, my... <laughs> Wait. <laughs>